Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome back to Enter Stage Window, um, our show where we have a conversation about some sort of, you know, role play topic or being online too much topic or, or things like that. Oh, I'm so excited everybody's here. Hey, Lunar. Hey, Landon. Oh, yeah. Well, you're in the you're in the VC, too. I was going down reading everybody's name. Um, hey, Naomi. Hey, Erica. All right. So, of course, obviously, I'm here today um, with with Landon. So say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. Hey. And we also have a guest. We also have a guest. You I did. Said hi to me because I wrote in the chat. This is That's true. <laughs> All right. And we have a guest today. So, Sasha, say hi to everybody. What up, y'all? It's me, your problematic fave. I'm back. What? <laughs> we do love a problematic fave. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna get into some real juicy stuff today, so it's good that we have um we have our problematic fave here. <laughs> so speaking of that, Landon, what is the topic today? Oh, today is uh conflict and how to mm. not avoid it. Or I guess like that's not actually the theme. It's, Try it's just how, to, to, see if it how works, to handle yourself around conflict and social disagreements. But basically how to deal with the fact that there's going to be conflict in your life. Suck it mm -hmm. up and move on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, we, we do actually have slightly more insight than suck it up and move on. <laughs> because <laughs> believe it or not, some of us have experience in conflict. Who? Which one of which which any of us have have experienced conflict like ever? See the chat. Which one of us has gotten into the most conflict? Oh, we don't have to be most conflict, just any conflict. <laughs> oh, that's right. any is too easy. This is clearly a competition. <laughs> right. Well we well we know conflict right now. <laughs> oh. Well, we know the lore is that Landon never makes mistakes, right? That's Inner Stage Window lore right there. Um, and anybody who's watched a lot of episodes of Inner Stage of Inner Stage Window um, knows about some of the Sasha history as well. Um, so, uh, so yeah, everybody, if you're a true fan, you already know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm perfect. <laughs> anyway, All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get the game going so we can get started. Yeah, but let's talk about favorite things. I want to hear about this week. I was just telling everybody off, off stream that uh, it's a Pisces moon this week. Hey, it's a my, my face today. Um, <laughs> no, that it's a Pisces moon this week, which means everyone's like new moon. I meant, which means everyone's in their like feels. So I want to hear some happy things. What were some favorite things? Oh, okay, okay. okay. Um, I, my favorite thing this week has been some online shopping. So um, so people that watched Thursday's stream know that I have been going freaking through it this week and my week's been absolutely insane, ridiculous. Go watch um, Artistic License from Thursday. VODs are on my channel if you want to know more. Um, but uh, but but uh, Amazon has uh, pulled through for us, and we've been able to order everything that we need. It's been all good, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we ordered, you know, um, some Power Aids that we love, and some other drinks like that, some Pedialyte things like that. Um, we ordered some different fun ramens. I got, I tried one that was a uh, uh, pad Thai flavor. It actually tasted like pad Thai. I was amazed. Ooh. Um, yeah. And, uh, and we found out which grocery stores will actually do like deliveries. So that's been great. So we've been able to still order some produce and things like that. So um, yeah, deliveries. Thank you. That has been my favorite thing this week. Saved my booty. It has been, uh, that is one of the things that I'm, I'm kind of happy for the pandemic or that's a positive spin on the pandemic is that these delivery uh, channels are more accessible to everybody and to mm -hmm. from in all places because it used to be that like if you lived anywhere outside of a major city you couldn't get anything delivered except pizza mm -hmm. um, and now we don't have to do that yeah it's so much better now so much better with all that stuff so yeah so that's my that's favorite thing favorite this week yeah all right Sasha what is your favorite thing my favorite thing is that I got a promotion recently, and my girlfriend took me out to dinner to congratulate Hello. me for my promotion. That's so it was nice. It was super adorable. We went out in matching outfits. It was schoolgirl themed. The dude next to oh. us, some show was having the time of life. <laughs> <laughs> when I got there, he offered to buy us a, a bottle of alcohol. I was like, I thank you, sir. Thank you. 
<laughs> you know, that's if anybody scary. was going to have like a schoolgirl themed date, it would be you and your girlfriend. Like that is that's just absolutely perfect. That's the vibe. <laughs> I love that so much, and this. I hope the the not only was the company good, but was the food delicious and good. The food was good. I had the most amazing spicy Brussels sprouts. Oh, they were delicious. I Brussels love Brussels sprouts. sprouts. Done right is the best, especially mm -hmm. if they're spicy. Very Sounds good. Sick. And I want some Brussels sprouts now. That's one of our favorite vegetables: Brussels sprouts and broccoli. We eat a lot of that kind of stuff. That they're sounds so like good. amazing. Actually, I might have to go to the store to get some Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Eat your vegetables, children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Landon, what's your favorite thing? Uh, my favorite thing, I, uh, like a lot of people you might know, was in the big sads this week. Um, and so I did what anyone with a tarot problem and big sads does, and that's buy a new tarot deck. Um, I just dropped it in the chat if anyone wants to look at the beautifulness that it is. Um, and I also did that. And then yesterday, I actually had signed up for this a few weeks ago. But I've been taking tarot lessons um, at my local shop. And I um, did... <laughs> oh, we're getting a raid. Oh my um, god, 23 people! 23 people! Sass, Crazy. thank you so freaking much. Oh, and bits. Um, holy, holy crap. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Go go on with your tarot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, did a, uh, I did a nice lesson that was supposed to be a whole class, and everyone else canceled, so it ended up being a private tutor lesson on how to do the uh, Celtic cross, which, oh. you know, was really cool because that's something that I had wanted to learn, and I've been, I've been studying tarot for over a year now, but I've really gotten into it in the last nine-ish months and so being mm -hmm. able to actually finally do and understand the ins and outs of this classic spread is really nice so i love that it's awesome. i'm yeah, so excited for you i'm so excited for you i find find tarot such a useful tool for um for actually getting some self insight which is so important for some of the yeah. stuff we're going to talk about today no i love it and if anyone ever wants a reading hit me up yeah <laughs> That's all i gotta say Erica wants to know how many tarot decks you have at this point, Landon. Mm. Too many. Uh, Too many? <laughs> well, uh, and then I also woke up this morning again in the big sads and discovered a Harry Potter tarot deck uh, made by an Etsy person, so that got ordered too. Is uh, this so weird? That will bring tarot to four, oracle to two, and affirmation cards to one. Wow. Oh my gosh. Y'all, we got a hype train because people keep giving bits and subscribing. Sass, thank you for the sub. Um, and, and Daddy Sass, there's wow. two of you, apparently. Thank you for the bits. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, thank you so yes. much, guys. Oh my god. <clears throat> I feel so important. Thank you. You are. Fine ladies and gentlemen. You're making me feel special on my special day. Oh, wow. Holy 10 shit. tier 1 subs. Oh my god, Tap, Hot thank you so much dog. for all the gift subs. Let's see who oh all god. got one. Um, oh my gosh, I'm trying to do this maze at the same time. Can somebody read out the names of who got one? <laughs> I can't look and do the okay, maze. Okay, <laughs> I, I can do it. We've got tier one more. sub to oh, Chiller91, this is, this is Katie, Designs, Lorcus, Irony Storm, Scotty Ice1993, Wabsuit, Lefoxious, Masumara, Mr. Radish Lord. Oh look, we got more to Dangan Rompon eighty four, Cold Paint X Jester forty two, Damn Demi Eggs, Camzilla seven two seven. I love reading out people's usernames online. <laughs> Everybody is always trying. To, I don't know. Like I love old school funny usernames like X Jester four twenty X. Like that's some old school classic internet stuff. It's not branded. It's whack. Scotty Ice nineteen ninety three is also a personal favorite. Like, that's right, you know, you're just Scotty Ice 1993, the way I was, like, Dragon Girl 6 Agreed. back in 2004. That's, that is such a 2000s username. Cool. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Angel oh Fox my gosh. Angel was my first Neopets username. Of course it was. That's beautiful. That's so on brand for mm -hmm. you. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what that... 
Y'all, I have never gotten a hype train before. This is the first one. I'm like so amazed and I'm so glad it happened on this stream because this is such an important topic to me. Um, so I would, I would love, uh, you know, y'all feel free to keep the hype going, but, um, but I want to get into it because we've got a lot to say today and I want to make sure that we get to all that juicy stuff that I know Landon and Sasha want to share about conflict online. Um, cause we deal with that, you know, in roleplay communities quite a lot. So yeah. So La Landon, how do we want to get that started today? Oh, he, someone wants me to say dang in Rorpeg man again. I don't know. Let me try and read that. Oh, okay. D D oh, Dan RPG man 84. Dang oh. Rorpeg man. Dang, it, it's Dan, <laughs> Dan, Dan RPG man. Okay. I know who that is. That's Dan, Dan no, RPG man. <laughs> he plays roleplay games on Twitch. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, all right. So I think we're <clears throat> Start. Yeah, where and, should we start? Uh, Sasha requested to have a true definition of what conflict is. Yes. Okay. Um, because yes. I think, and I'll read the definition and then we can talk about why it's important to have this definition. A struggle resulting from incompatible or opposing needs drives wishes or external or internal demands. Mm. So why is it important that we define it that way? Yeah. So Sasha, you had a little bit of a take on this. So I'd love to hear your perspective. Like why, why was it important for us that we define conflict at the start? Okay. So it's important to define conflict at the start because it is important to understand that conflict is just a normal part of life. Like disagreeing with people, having opposing needs or wants, wanting to get things from other people, them wanting to get things from you. These are staples and it's, it's not an attack on your person. It is not abusive. Conflict is not necessarily about control or harm. It is just the fact that individuals are individuals and we have different things that we want and when we gather together or we are in groups sometimes those opposing needs or de desires butt up against each other it is just something that happens and i think sometimes when people are like i'm not getting what i want or it's hard to get what i want or i feel afraid to ask for what i want they feel they are like this negative emotion must mean that the situation is dangerous or threatening to me which is not necessarily true just because something feels scary to you does not mean that something is happening it just means that it's always kind of stressful to ask for what you want or to have to disagree with somebody. And so setting that baseline understanding of discomfort is important. Like you're not necessarily going to enjoy being in conflict. And if you enjoy conflict too much, it's probably going to be bad for you. <laughs> but, under but understanding that this is just kind of like part of the human experience, if not the most pleasant part, helps to set the tone. So when you're like, oh, I feel kind of icky doing this, it's like, yeah, that's normal. The icky feeling is normal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that people understood that today we're not really going to be talking about things like abuse. We're not really going to be talking about things that are actually harmful. We really are talking about just conflict. And I, and sometimes conflict can feel harmful, but that's that's really not what our focus is today. That is a whole that is a whole other episode <laughs> about abuse yeah. that happens in online spaces, right? And that is not the topic for today. Yeah, and we'll gladly talk about that at some point, but it is yeah. it is not. We're talking about plain old disagreement. Mm -hmm. And Sasha is right. It literally happens in all aspects of your life. And you can be the most non-confrontational person ever but i guarantee it has happened you have mm -hmm. you have you've had conflict at some point in your life um yeah. and you're going to continue to have it in rp especially because communication is a lot more complicated online than it is in person Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yep absolutely um so that's what we're gonna be getting into today and i think that's a good like first point right yeah. everybody experiences conflict no matter how conflict diverse you are it happens and it's it, in, online in real life all of that sort of stuff it is like impossible to live a life without conflicting with other people have fun trying yeah <laughs> but i feel like it's not even fun trying <laughs> Yeah, you if you spend, go ahead. If Sasha, you spend sorry. all your life, 
you're fine. If you spend all your life avoiding conflict, you're probably not getting your needs met. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many sacrifices are you willing to make in order to avoid conflict? How many hoops are you willing to jump through in order to avoid conflict? And conflict could literally be anything. It can be, you know, someone made your drink wrong at a Starbucks and you sit there and you ask for another drink. Like, mm-hmm. and they think that you made it right because you asked for vanilla and they put too much vanilla in it. Like, that's conflict. It's a yeah. super low risk, low level conflict, but it's still conflict. And a life without that, it doesn't exist. Yeah. It's like, it, it is. It's like the person that, like, the, the restaurant gets your order wrong and you're just like, it's fine, I'll just eat it. Like, yeah. you know, they probably would like to make it right if you would tell them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and and I think also it's important to, to talk about the fact that conflict isn't always a negative thing. Like, mm-hmm. how, many, how many of us have had a conflict with something and maybe come up with a better idea because of it? Yeah. Or found a, or found a different avenue that you were originally going to go this way and they were originally going to go that way. And then you, like, compromise and you realize that the quickest way is actually down Main Street. Who knows? Like that conflict can be a good thing to have. And I think it's a really good thing to have in, in RPs. Mm -hmm. I think it's very difficult in, in, um, in creative spaces to have no conflict because of what you said, having those conversations oftentimes leads to a better result. Like I'll take something that's probably very simple for anyone to understand. If you are writing a book and you send that into an editor, an editor is going to give their opinion on what they think you should change about that book. They're, if they're a good editor, they're going to say something that upsets you. Okay. They're going to say something <laughs> that pisses you off, that makes you think like, oh, they don't get it, uh, you know, whatever. But if that doesn't happen, they're not really doing their job. And maybe what they say upsets you, but that that unlocks you like being like okay well i hate this suggestion but the reason they felt that way is because of this and i could make this change instead right and then you end up with a better book at the end yep absolutely and that is still an example of conflict Mm -hmm. um and then another part of like avenue of, of positive conflict is like negotiation um sometimes you are you can only live your life through your perspective and you can try to be as open to other people's perspectives as possible but really you only have the insight and ability to look through a situation through your eyes truly and and truly understand it what negotiation does and conflict and talking about it allows you insight into another person's understanding and reasoning um which just gives you more information and more access to the actual experience that you're going through so um, an example of that is um, if you're negotiating terms of a work employment or something like that, like maybe a, a company doesn't have the ability to give you unlimited time off, um, trying to negotiate and understand why the company can't do that, but what can they offer you in return that might actually be better than unlimited time off. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows? Like the those are those are examples that I just came up with. But that negotiation tactic allows you to see through other people's lenses, and that is a form of if you were so conflict avoided that you wouldn't have that conflict to begin with, you'll never understand what the other person is coming from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's very true. Um, so. I think that when it comes to those types of conflicts, like if we take the work example, maybe work can't give you like unlimited time off, right? They can't give you unlimited PTO, but maybe you're, you'll be allowed to take a sabbatical so that you can go do what you need to do. And they'll say that we'll keep your job for you and you can have it when you come back. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, No. No, she's not trilling. Yeah, it's the game. The The game has some noise too, but I make the game noise very quiet. So you'll mostly hear Landon and Sasha. Oh, and then also my cat is here purring. So you might be picking up on that too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you might be. <laughs> He's being very cuddly today. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you hear, if you hear background purring. It's not me. It's the cat. Cute. Um, <laughs> oh, look at that. 
the landon and the lunar <laughs> that just makes me so happy Hell yes. um, and, and how can you do this in rp like we've been talking about doing it in our in work but how can like negotiation work in rp and that's hey i'm not comfortable necessarily with this of you okay let's take an example i am not comfortable with jim using who's a character of mine and freya using his magical powers on my character in this way but i would be okay with trying to find a middle ground and that middle ground might produce a plot that would it be better than saying no or just saying yes and then feeling uncomfortable about it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep not to mention that role playing is essentially a huge area of constant compromise yeah uh role players are you a person who puts ads up all the time and yet you never find what you want have you considered that you are not offering anybody anything that they want i have seen this so many times where like the conflict teaches you about negotiation but negotiation and compromise are things that you learn or you can apply in so many other areas yep. and if you're like averse to conflict or determined to get a hundred percent what you want all the time oh how often you get nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah sasha i feel like you probably have some good examples of that because um the site that you run barbara monger really is a hub for people to find those one-on-one -on -one role plays so can you think of an example of that where you've had somebody that just like is constantly struggling and struggling and struggling with their ads getting noticed Oh my God, no, listen, I have two that jump to mind. Two, two people. Um, they're, oh, I apologize to both of you people. If you listen to this, you probably never will, but. Well, we don't, we're not going to name names, so I no one's going to be able them. to figure I, out it was you. I won't, I won't name them, but <laughs> who are these, pe who are these <laughs> no people? No one else will. know who you are. <laughs> but, um, so there's one, he's. Uh, the they, they like they have they put up the same ad kind of over and over and over and over and they have they have developed a reputation for they will if you try to role play with them and you give them what they want on the surface but as soon as the role play goes in a direction where like it's not exactly what they want it like it's not even going badly it's not even like it's necessarily boring something super edgy you know hasn't necessarily been introduced it's just that this person has like an extremely particular vision of the way they want this role play to go between these two archetypes and if you are not able to like read their mind and give them exactly what they want then they ghost and then they just go and they put up the same ad over and over and over mm. and they have done this for actual years for years which is why this reputation of theirs is so established because so many people have you know approached this person and like okay i'll write with you and then been burned i actually got like a random email from them i don't have a role play ad up but they like were asking me about role play and i was like hey no but also do you do you know these things that like do you you know you have a reputation i don't think I got a response another one there's another one that's similar it's the person who puts like the same ad up like over and over i responded to i've responded to this person on like two different occasions and one time they just like made up an excuse to be like oh i don't think i'm interested anymore and another time they just like they post ads and then they like don't respond like people just like they don't know what they want they don't know how to negotiate they don't know how to they don't know how to do anything but like like a little baby that like is like I want this thing and only this thing it's and and it's so like I, I'm saying like narcissistic but I don't want you to take that in like a mean way like a predatory narcissist like a baby is a narcissist babies can't help it they are like functionally unable to meet a lot of their own needs and they are depending on somebody else to do it for them they don't even necessarily understand their own needs and so I see these things with a lot of like role play ads that I'll see like over and over that are unsuccessful it is this tunnel vision about like getting exactly what they want and i'm like i don't know i guess on, it, on some level it must be satisfying i think there are people who write ads like people who write play ads are like people who are on tinder just to swipe some people just want to get some attention 
know that they, you know, know that people would be interested, but it's not. Yeah, and then they never want to go I on think, the date. <laughs> yeah, they just want it. They want to get dates, but not go on them. So you know mm -hmm. what? I, I, that that's annoying, but valid. So it's like the online equivalent of like going to a bar and like chatting people up and like getting no one's phone number. But <laughs> I do think there are some people who just like legitimately like don't have a deeper grasp. It, like they don't know what's going on. They don't know why these things never work out for them. And I think it like, it makes them very disillusioned about role play in general. It makes them disillusioned about people in general. I think what? it can have a really negative um, effect on self-esteem. One, to one quick honest. thing. I know, I know Landon, I know you want to jump in, but Sasha, just to let you know, your audio sounds a little bit off. Um, it's not too bad, mm -hmm. but it does cut out every once in a while. I don't know if like your headphones aren't fully plugged in or if your internet's being weird, but if you can like, if you can get closer to your router or something or check your headphones real quick, that would be awesome. Okay, go ahead, Landon, with what you're going to say in response to that. Say that I think it, people who are doing that are already dis disillusioned by other people. Like it's not this, it, they don't suddenly become like not aware of other humans because they're posting this ad over and over again and looking for someone to fill the cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. um, it, they've already unaware of that. People need to bend and grow and, and, and negotiate and try to figure out in order to fit with each other. And I think that that's personally a society thing. I think that the way we explain friendships and relationships in within our society is very much like someone that you never argue with someone that you never have conflict with that always agrees with each other that is your best friend that you are on the same page at all times that x y and z and that's like mm -hmm. how we that's how we view healthy relationships when in reality that's not what a healthy relationship is Yep. Uh, I think I said this I before would... in another in another episode, like, how do you know if someone's really your friend if they've never like pissed you off or annoyed you? Yeah. How do you know? Like, because you if know. you've not been able to feel that and then be like, eh, that's OK, I'm still friends with them, even though we had this argument or even though they said this thing that I found like super frustrating. Like, if you've never experienced that with a person, then to me, like, you've not achieved that level of int intimacy where you've actually got friendship. You've just got an acquaintance. Exactly. You just have you just have someone that you know, and it's yeah. not any depth or any level. But that is how we, as a society, have tricked ourselves into thinking what relationships are. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I think that the the conflict aversion starts there. Mm -hmm. That, and I also obviously think that there's probably a, a people who are super conflict averse come from very conflict heavy past. Possibly, um, yeah. A lot of them that I know, at least, mm -hmm. um, it come from, you know, they don't like conflict for that reason because they've never seen healthy conflict. There's this idea that conflict is unhealthy, and that's why we talked about the difference between abuse and conflict. And not con conflict is not unhealthy, inherently. There are mm -hmm. unhealthy ways to have conflict, but the actual existence of conflict is just part of human nature. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, All right, is my mic better now, guys? Oh, yeah, that, that sounds way better. Thank that you. Sounds way better. Okay, I hopped onto my cellular device. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm actually going to um, turn you up in the Discord real quick. So y'all are going to see my screen be weird, but that's okay. Y'all, Landon and Sasha, y'all keep talking while I fix this. Oh, no, yeah. So I think that, that that existence of conflict leads to all of these things that will make you stronger partners and will, like... And if you have a basic understanding of that, you will understand that there isn't going to be someone who just fits into the mold of what you want. There's mm -hmm. not going to be anyone out there who will perfectly agree with playing a character opposite you the exact same way that you want them to. Um, if you've gotten to that point, you've already don't understand human beings. <laughs> 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 or you or need you need more practice. At least you need more practice. I would say that's you know that's fair because you're missing a fundamental understanding about what conflict is and what it can be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so I think that 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 is an important part. And I think also a, a step involved in this is um, the 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 difference between resolution or resolution or or finishing and ending a conflict and winning. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
Um, and I think Sasha's so example, know. Sasha's example yeah. of the person that posts the same ad over and over is is a really good example of this. You know, if they're trying, if they're looking for this one specific thing and nothing else is good enough, then they're really focused on like winning as far as like I have a goal and I'm going to achieve that goal. No other possible um, realization of that goal is is acceptable to me. And I think that is really taking on this kind of winning mindset as opposed to taking on the mindset of like, you know, I just I, I just want to have fun or I just want a dynamic that's like this or something that's a little bit, you know, easier for someone else to fulfill. Or if you want something very specific, making sure that you're also fulfilling something very specific that the other person wants. Like that's another way you could handle it as well. Um, and, and if you take it from that standpoint of like, I'm looking for a happy resolution where I'm satisfied instead of like, I have this one specific goal that I must meet, then um, I think that's a much healthier way to have that conflict and have those negotiating conversations. A part of me disagrees with a little bit of that. I almost feel like that the person that Sasha was talking about um, wasn't wasn't even winning like like i guess when i like look at winning i almost look like you have to be an active participant in it. <laughs> um, gotta be in it to win it right <laughs> yeah you gotta be in it to win it that there is a goal yes there is goal in oriented but you are actively fighting somebody else like winning almost has conflict conflict involved in it what it sounds mm. like so the person that sasha's talking about doesn't even have any conflict it is you need to fill this mold or you or i'm gonna move on like it's yeah, so not they don't even, even get like, that far <laughs> you don't even get that far there isn't any winning because because there's like it's not even like i am you have to bend to my will it's more like this is how it is mm. play well, by can, the rules well, or don't like it's yeah you can see that a failure of these social skills kind of manifests in many ways. Like, you could say that this person is, like, very determined to win in the sense that, like, winning is very, like, narrowly defined. But they also are clearly extremely conflict-averse because here's the thing. The thing that nobody knows about this role player is nobody knows what they want. Like, nobody knows in what ways they failed. Nobody knows in what way their character, like, I don't know, quote, fell flat or disappointed. Nobody knows in what way the role play did not go the way that this person wanted. Like, this person has never seemed to come out and be like, hey, like, like you know, they, they don't set very clear expectations. Mm. Like, there's kind of, I don't know, there's, you could almost say there's kind of a bait and switch involved. Like, they kind of keep this ad open and they exude, like, this flexibility that they don't actually feel because they're so averse to being like, this specific thing is what I really want. They don't want to engage in the, I don't know, the conflict of having to ask for what they want. I got mm. you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of like both. It's like they, they want to somehow win without putting in any work to, to do the winning. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, yes. so but I think, on, I mean, I think that... Top. I think that this is this is the the problem though with like being that conflict averse is that you never get to truly bond with somebody. You mm -hmm. you never get if you if you never have a disagreement and you never, you know, have to compromise anything, then you end up with like no actual friends. And I and I know that like not everyone needs to be friends with someone to role play with them. But dang, it makes it a lot easier if you both like your writing partner, you know, in character and out of character. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, even if you're not friends, you need to be able to like talk to somebody. Like, I, as as you know, I've, I'm I can be like the most aloof of the players. <laughs> I'm just like, please, I you don't you don't want to hear about my real life. You just you do not perceive me. me. <laughs> Pronouns are none. Do not perceive me. <laughs> but um, you need to be able to be like, hey, like, where is this scene going? Like, what are our characters going to do? Like, where is our plot going? Like, what do you think? And you have to be able to present ideas and have your ideas critiqued in turn. And you need to be, you also need to be able to constructively disagree with somebody sometimes. Like, disagreeing with somebody is a skill. I'm not sure people appreciate that. They're like, oh, well, I'm just being, I've heard this phrase so many times, really honest. I'm like, no, 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 no
Bad, 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 bad. <laughs> it hurts to hear. Yes, yes. Like, there are strategic and compassionate ways to engage in conflict. And treating brutal, quote, brutal honesty as a virtue is usually a way to, like, mask poor conflict skills. Mm-hmm. If you're not mm -hmm. really honest, you're just rude. <laughs> <laughs> why does, like, why does the honesty have to be brutal? Can't you be kindly honest? You know what I mean? <laughs> What's the purpose? I don't, well, that's the thing. People, I think people go into conflict without, like, a clear goal. This kind of is on topic. So it's important when you get in, when you are, when you feel like you're rubbing up against somebody, you're like, we want different things. You need to be clear on, like, what you want. You're like, what do I want? Why do I want it? And why do I want what I want? And so on and so forth. You have to have, like, a clear understanding of yourself. And you have to understand. You have to try to understand the other person. Well, what do they want? And why is that so, you know, why does that conflict with what I want? And that understanding allows you to be like, okay, well, you know, if you want blue and I want red like is there a shade of purple or magenta or like dark blue that would be agreeable to both of us if you can't triangulate where you are and where they are you're not going to go into that conversation with like any kind of understanding or like any kind of clear goal you're going to go in there possibly hoping to like browbeat them intimidate them completely persuade them over to your side or you know you're going to go in there and, it, and that's going to be what happens to you you're just have going to you're going to be completely blindsided when this person explains themselves to you you're not going to be able to defend yourself or articulate what it is you want you're going to just cave because when mm -hmm. somebody confronts you and they're like what do you want and you don't know the tendency to be like haha just kidding never mind very powerful <laughs> Landon, I'm having I'm having a flash here, like thinking about all the people that we have experienced that just said yes to something that they yeah. didn't want, and then months yeah. into it, they're coming to us as the mods trying to help us help get bailed out of the situation. Be like we don't, we can't help you. If the, like, I mean, we dude, can, you said yes like... three months ago. You said yes three months ago. Why aren't you talk? Why why aren't you talking to the person? You said you know? yes three months ago, and you've written towards this moment. What yeah. is happening? Um, I also think, uh, I wanted to add something in there that I think is important when it comes to finding, uh, a answer or a negotiation or a middle ground is that, um, the way that, the way that you said it, Sasha, is that if one person sees red and one person sees blue trying to figure out a color, a purple or some sort of mixture, it doesn't always have to be that either. Um, mm -hmm. it can be part, sometimes the negotiation is sacrificing and sitting there and being like, okay, we can do blue first and then red. Um, yeah, that works too. That, like, I just want to make sure that, cause I think that there is this like idea that you have to, that you have to give up what you want in order to find that perfect negotiation. And you don't always have to. Um, there are times that you can sit there and say, no, this is what I want, but I will also give you what you want. Even if we can't do those at the same time, even if we can't make purple, we can do blue and then red. Or you can do green. They're like, or you can do green. The Absolutely. Or there's this, or is there, there's the situation where just like you come into this situation, the two of you discuss and you're like, actually, we both like green and mm -hmm. we can both do green but the point of this is is that like i said you have to kind of if you don't understand yourself if you are not honest if you're not able to understand your, yourself and you're not able to be honest with yourself then you can you are not going to be able to communicate what you want with another person you can't yeah. tell someone what you want if you don't know what you want and i think sometimes people's wants can be like very nebulous or like you go into a role play and you're like well of course I want my character to fall in love with this other character and be together forever. And like the other person will is, of course I want my character to die tragically. Like who doesn't want their character to die horribly <laughs> and tragically? You're speaking but to me. You're speaking to that. me. <laughs> but, um, because like what we all, because we're like, well, of course I like what I like, but like, you know, really like, but why, why do you like it? And do other people know that you like it or understand 
why you like it because without that I don't know sometimes I think kind of another thing is if you get along with somebody well like out of character you will be afraid to risk sometimes like the out of character chumminess even though the in character interaction is kind of meh you're like yeah I want this so different like I want something more but you're like oh no now I have kind of a friend and that means I can never disagree with them I can never <laughs> tell them that their character is annoying this is a minor thing but i had like I've, i had kind of had a squabble with a friend where i was just like i just don't like the annoying way you are writing your character <laughs> you need to stop. <laughs> like, i've known her for almost a decade now which is why i'm willing to just like be like girl what the fuck but um you know but like we still talk like we're still friends we talk about the news and like other stuff like you can you know role play is if you're full play is what you're there for then sometimes that can kind of make things a little bit awkward but like you would be surprised mm -hmm. i think like if you're willing to be like kind to people and kind of upfront about what you want and what you're willing to give people are pretty flexible actually oh yeah yeah, for sure. I mean, we have that have come up in the cafe sometimes where people will be like, oh, I'm really struggling because this person shouldn't be a mod because of this, that, and the other. Or this person is a really horrible role player. They're screwing up here, here, and here. We keep warning them. It's not getting better. Da, 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 da. And then it turns out the reason that they won't take any action is because they're like, but I really like them. They're my friend. And it's like, that is no, so not relevant. Like, just because you're friends with someone doesn't mean you have to role play with them. The two things you know? are not related. <laughs> <laughs> not really. I mean, they're 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 like interconnected, but they're not like a one to one relationship, you know, or or like the opposite. I've had people that are like players that'll say things like, well, like, gosh, I don't really want to leave this role play because I have so many friends in there. And it's like, but like you can friend request them. Like, you don't have to stop being friends just because the role play is not working out. I you know? understand. I understand that. Um, to an extent, because it's leaving a community. You're yeah. not going to remain friends with everybody when you remain, when you leave a community. You're going to miss out yeah. on... It's like going no longer going to a club. You're going to miss out on jokes. You're going to miss out on yeah. stories. You're going to miss out on... You have to make more of an effort when it's a bunch of one-on-one yeah. -on -one relationships. That and is very true. To, and you need to build it. When mm -hmm. you're like one on one that's a lot easier because you can sit there and be like, we can still be friends and not write together. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. I understand why people are hesitant to leave an RP that they don't want to leave the community. Yeah. Uh, do I think it's right? Not necessarily. If you're not enjoying the story, don't be there. Like that's like people will tell that you don't like the story, and that since that's 99% of the reason why everyone else is there, um, you will start to stick out, and that will start to cause problems. But it's awkward. <laughs> it's awkward when that happens, and everyone can notice. You know what I mean? We all know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Sasha's like, yep, been there, know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I think we all have, right? <laughs> but yeah, I think that that is, those are all really important um, things to say, like to, to talk about yeah, uh, when it comes sure. to conflict. I also wanted to bring up, um, and this is going to hit home for a lot of people. And I think this is controversial. People are not going to like to hear this, even though I'm 100% right. Oh, oh Lord. Um, 100%. 100%. <laughs> conflict doesn't just happen to you. Mm. It is something you are actively involved in, whether you know it or not, one way or another. Oh, you are not just, done, like, done. sitting here and being like, I'm just sitting here minding my own business and then someone came up to me and started yelling at me. That's not how, that's, no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> you, are, you are part of the problem, my friend. Life, life in, you know problem. what, you know what, no, Landon, life in the universe did not exist before that moment. So that means they didn't have a history that caused them to do that. I don't nope. have a history that, that caused that to happen. No, life started at that moment, at that okay? Moment. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't walking like an asshole. He just ran into me. I wasn't a <laughs> little officer. I'm an innocent he ran into victim my fist. Who knew? Everything that has happened to me. It's true. You are 100% innocent, Sasha. You have never, yeah. you know, caused someone to have feelings never. about you ever. Never, never <laughs> looked, looked into someone's soul and was like, oh, 
this is a string that I can pull and know it will get a reaction. Never <laughs> thought that. Never looked at it. Never was like, let me just push this button that I know will piss someone off subtly. Listen, I'm like Abu in the Cave of Wonders, and you're like, don't touch anything, Abu. And I'm like, what's this? <laughs> but it's, but it's so beautiful. <laughs> um, it's so pretty. Yeah, and I think that that is something, especially in group dynamics, especially if you're conflict avoided, or if you are painting yourself as like the non-problem part of this thing, is that when there's a conflict within a group RP, um, if someone is coming at you, then uh, know that it wasn't just because they're coming at you. That you might, whether you meant to or not, you might have had something to do with that. Yeah, and cause doesn't mean fault necessarily. Like maybe no, you didn't do anything wrong, but you still did something. You still did something, um, yeah. and it's and it, like and that that could be bad, that could be good, that could be whatever. But it is there are two parties at play when there is a conflict, mm -hmm. um, and it and it isn't just someone being the aggressor and the victim. And I think a lot of people want to play the role or say that they and paint themselves as the victim when that is not what's happening. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Because the victim is seen as the only legitimate role. It's yeah. not true. It's not. Oh. As the as the aggressor in several <laughs> occasions. Uh, it's not. No. <laughs> and it's not the good guy side either sometimes. Just no, not necessarily. There's there's no good guys and bad guys. No. Um, Life is complex and nuanced. <laughs> yeah, in my narrative, I think you there is something. I think you hit on my... something important, Landon. That people what? think that init that in people feel like if I'm the one to initiate a conflict, I'm the bad guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, that's yeah. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, at least from my perspective, there have been many a uh, conflict that I have started. Um, <laughs> that I have started to prove a point, um, and to prove that that person is not necessarily the good guy, <laughs> and I am not the bad guy. But that's fine. That's my own personal view on that. But no, um, I think I think that is true. Just because you are the one bringing up or addressing a problem, or you are the yeah. one to state your needs first, or to be honest about your feelings, just because you are the one who opens up that conversation does not make you the bad guy. You are not a bad person for wanting things. You are not a bad person for wanting to change things. You are not a bad person for disagreeing with other people. Like, and you can, you can again, once again, you can find ways to do these things that are like both compassionate and strategic. Mm -hmm. Can be done. Mm -hmm. And, you and, on, on, and also to go on top of that, you are also not a bad person for not wanting to do any of those things either. Yeah, each situation um, is different. Like, you have to take it each situation. You can't just say, yeah. like, well, they started it. Like, well, uh, okay, like, who cares? Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, and it matters what your conflict is about. If your conflict is an interpersonal relationship because your personalities don't mesh well together, um, then that is, that's one kind of conflict that there isn't necessarily a bad guy or anything like that, as long as one person is not being abusive to the other it's just conflict mm -hmm. and then there's the conflict of disagreeing and there there isn't a bad guy either if you're sticking to your guns or negotiating yeah the i i think that you were right that there there is no bad or good side we can say it but there isn't all right shall we move on to how to lessen the amount of conflict or at least advice on how to lessen the amount of conflict yeah, 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 I think that that um, that we can definitely get into that. Okay, so um, you had a beautiful rule that you deemed the thumper rule because yes. of Bambi, right? Yes. Not so because um, of thump our lovely, no. not our lovely uh, writer. I when I first saw it, I was like. I feel like that rule has been around longer than Thumper has been. Yeah, no, no, no. Thumper from Bambi. So yeah. they, so they both, they both have their namesake from the same place, same yeah. source. Um, but yes, not related to our friend Thumper. Um, although they are, they are awesome. No, I'm actually talking about the original Thumper from Bambi. Okay, so there's a line in Bambi, and we've all heard it. And I don't even know. Maybe people don't even know it came from Bambi, but that's how it got popularized. Um, not that it get, like not came from as in they originated it, but that movie popularized it in in the lexicon. Um, if you can't say something nice, 
don't say nothing at all, okay? So I think this is a really good rule for avoiding unnecessary conflict, okay? So I'm not saying like, don't bring up your, your needs not being met. I'm not saying don't bring up things that, that you know need to be negotiated um, or, I'm not, or, or something's bothering you. Don't bring it up. Like, I'm not saying that. What I'm talking about is like, I see situations online where people are like so interested in being part of the conversation or forcing friendships to happen or, you know, a myriad of reasons. Those are just two off the top of my head that they will insert themselves into every single conversation, no matter whether it's positive or negative. So I'll, I'll give an example here. If everyone in the chat is going on about how much they love Britney Spears and they think she's so good and her music's so awesome and I just think she's like the bee's knees and you pop in and be like, Britney Spears sucks, I hate her. That is like so unnecessary. <laughs> like stop <It> that. <laughs> Don't do that. You're creating conflict where it doesn't need to exist. It is even, a, it's so unnecessary. And then what I hate more is the step above that, which someone will then sit there and go, we're talking about liking Britney Spears. Like that's a fine opinion you have, but like don't care about your opinion. Oh my and gosh. Then she, and then the person who, who brought up the fact that they hate Britney Spears will complain about the fact that they feel attacked about their opinion. It happens often. <laughs> oh my God. And, th and that whole interaction doesn't even need to happen. Like there's multiple steps in there where you can like stop that all from happening and none of it should have ever happened to begin with. <laughs> No, so, it shouldn't. And it's your fault it did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just think, I think, you know, there there is a certain amount of, like, casual negativity that I think is appropriate in, in a role play because most of the time you're friends and, you know, it's a group and it's whatever. And, like, you're, bo you're bonded at that point and you know each other. But, like, you know, if you're constantly being the one that's like, I disagree or I don't like that or I think that's dumb, like... If you're the one constantly being like that, then you're creating conflict where it doesn't need to exist. And then we can remember our rule. If if you're like, some, everybody's having a conversation, they're having a good time, and you want to come in and say something negative, just think to yourself, is this a nice thing to say? Okay, Karen, then maybe I will just wait for the next conversation. <laughs> Karen, Karen, I'm trying to express my opinion, Karen. Every single opinion don't have to be expressed, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, I'm sorry if the entire chat is loving Britney Spears, no one's gonna give a fuck that you don't love Britney Spears. <laughs> no one's yeah. gonna care. You're literally just trying to divert attention and create and whether you mean to pick a fight or create content or and create conflict, that's what you're doing when you do that. And we've all been in that scenario. Um, and I'm not saying that, like, don't share your opinion. At, don't share your opinion sometimes because all of us have had different opinions than what the group consensus is. And that's okay. I'm just saying every single time, most people know when they're being a shithead. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, well, well I want to, you know, for all the other socially awkward people here are the, the negative Nancys. As a negative Nancy who reserves the right to hate everything, I think you also kind of have to read the tone of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, if, like, are people discussing Britney Spears or are people just kind of having like a casual, friendly social conversation where they talk about loving Britney Spears the way they would talk about like, I really love this flavor of popcorn. What's your favorite flavor of popcorn? Or like, what do you like to get at Starbucks? Like, are people discussing like the merits of coffee? Are they discussing the merits of pop music? Or is it just like kind of like casual social bonding? Because yep. I've, I've mentioned this in the past, but like as the person who has sometimes been like, I in fact hate Britney Spears. Part of it is, is like, I'm not reading the room. I am not understanding that what's happening is like casual social chit chat. And I'm just kind of killing the vibe. Like this is not supposed to be like a really hard thoughtful discussion and if you dislike something a lot of the time it's because you've maybe thought harder about it or you've thought more or differently about it like this isn't trying to be a discussion and it's not so much that you have to suppress your opinion it's just that you have to like if everybody's kind of having like a happy fun time like you should just wait for a conversation where you can be part 
of the happy fun time like them disagreeing with you isn't personal it's not them like leaving you out it's okay for people to have different opinions and you're not necessarily being excluded because i think part of wanting to share your opinion is like well i want to feel included i Mm want to feel like i can contribute to the group and that my opinion can still be valuable but like you just gotta see sometimes that like maybe you should wait for something else where you can kind of participate with a little more enthusiasm instead of like feeling this need to potentially like Karen has said start this conflict by having like a very strong negative opinion in a group that's just kind of goofing off and having a good time Mm -hmm. yep and I'll take it a step further like just to give an example of how this this tends to happen in online discourses. <laughs> so not that Britney Spears is problematic, Discourse. but let's pretend, yeah, let's pretend that Britney Spears did something like, I don't know, like she did something racist recently or whatever. I don't, I don't let's just make it up. She did not, okay? Mm-hmm. Not that I know of anyway. If she did, don't tell me about it. I don't really care. She's her own person. Um, but let's pretend that like recently she did and everybody's kind of vibing about like, yeah, Britney Spears, we like, we love her and da 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 And then you're like, oh, but look at this time six months ago or a year ago that she did this problematic thing. And it's like, it's just like, no, like, it doesn't matter. (laughs) Like, it doesn't matter for that conversation because nobody actually knows Britney Spears, you know, that's talking about it. Um, They're not talking about like her as a person. They're just vibing you know yes, so so yeah <laughs> and I, so and you don't have to do that people are vibing <laughs> mm-hmm. and i think that there is a um there is also a level here that i think we have to discuss that like especially if it comes to um Britney Spears said something racist and then you want to mm-hmm. you want to let's actually can we use a real life example um yeah we can, can we if talk- you have a if you have a good one can we talk about harry potter Yes, we can talk and about talk, Harry Potter. And, ta- and talking about the fact that, like, sometimes people want to bring in the fact that J.K. Rowling is a terrible transphobe when talking about Harry Potter. And oh, I struggle with always... that. I struggle with that because she has said some things and I, oh my, I'm so, I get so mad at her. Absolutely. And Which so when people vibe, to... when people vibe about Harry Potter, I do want to be like, yeah, but J.K.R. is a turf. <laughs> like, I want to, yeah. but like, I just don't. I just shut the fuck and up. And here's the thing. <laughs> if you feel that a part of your allyship or being a part of the community or whatever is to initiate that conflict, that is okay. You just need to know that you are initiating conflict and that will get you in trouble. It could. I mean, you could, start, could. A, not, you could start an argument. I mean, not necessarily like... You ruin the vibe. People might not like you because you are ruining the vibe or, or crashed in the party or whatever. Um, that, that like, so I guess for me, what is really the, the thing about, like, that I don't like when people do this or that is really difficult when people do this is when they then feel victimized about the fact that they have invented this conflict, mm-hmm. that they don't realize that they have invented it that they are the problem, that they're bringing these things up and they're like, that they feel victimized by the fact that they then engaged in conflict, if that yeah. makes sense. Like, oh, they didn't want to turn this conversation into a deep discussion or, or debate. And and now, you know, but they should have, they should have wanted that because I wanted that, you know? Yeah. Or, or the sitting there and being like, oh, no one agreed with me. Or people just sat there and it was like, oh, well, we're just talking about how much we like Harry Potter, not J.K. Rowling. Mm-hmm. Like, nothing to do with J.K. Rowling. And if people sat there and was like, oh, okay, but, like, they're this, like, why don't they understand my perspective? It's like, because that's not what the conversation's about. Mm-hmm. You're engaging and starting conflict about something that has nothing to do with this. Mm-hmm. That's, I think, I think an important distinction to make at least in my mind is sitting there and going the difference between yeah you can engage in conflict if you want but then own it own that you're doing that that's true yeah yeah and don't so. be surprised if, if people get tired of it <laughs> you have yeah, to do it a lot <laughs> if, don't be surprised if people start calling you out on it or calling yeah. you a negative fancy or um making comments about it or like the worst I think that happens, that happens quite a bit sometimes, is when you make a comment and then the chat dies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that it just goes silent. And that, like, that waiting, it just, yeah, like, that happens too. Don't be surprised when these things happen and no one engages you in it. Because yeah. people don't necessarily want to engage in conflict. 
Yeah, because they might have been like, oh, man, I was just vibing. And then, yeah. so then they're like, oh, never mind. I'm going to do, go do something else now because I don't really feel like talking about, you know, this this heavy topic right now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. So I think that that, like, and I, and I, because I think that there's a fine line there, especially when we start talking about things like racism and, and uh, being part of the LGBTQ community that is, oh, like, yeah allyship involved in it that yeah. people will continue to do conflict because that is their that is their view of their duty as a as a um ally mm -hmm. um that 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 is where the line is is that be like be wary that then that's what you're doing yeah. that is you have to understand purpose. understand the full picture of what that looks like to everybody yes. else exactly so <clears throat> So yeah, just just uh, read the room. I think some of the stuff that Sasha said mm -hmm. about like when this happens, what's what's really happening inside the person is they're not they're not understanding that people are just vibing, and uh, and they think that they're contributing to the conversation, you know. Yes. So I just I, and it takes practice, right? Like this isn't something that I expect, you know. If this is you, right? Like if you're hearing this and you're like, oh my gosh, this is me, like. I, I don't think this is something you can fix overnight. So like, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Like, it's okay. It's chill. But just like, you know, next time it happens, next time you have an opportunity, just think about it and be like, hmm, is this what I want to do? Or is this an opportunity to behave differently? I continue just keep to practicing. misread rooms. I continue to misread rooms. I'm out here doing it for y'all every day. <laughs> <laughs> My taste terrible i will never change <laughs> this is my promise <sighs> and we love you for it <laughs> but i think sasha also oh, like you're so you're not you're not one of those people that's complaining like oh i started a fight come save me <laughs> yeah or i don't understand why nobody likes me because i did this thing or or why right. does everyone go quiet in the chat when i talk like that has been a complaint that we've gotten it's been like have you looked at what you said in the chat yeah and it's yeah. kind of like so we can might have a conversation with them that's like oh can you show us an example of where that happened and they can pull up an example and it's like well that's because you said this thing that didn't match the tone of what everyone else was saying. <laughs> Jane just said, when in doubt, I sit out. And mm. yes, that is a good way to do it. If people are vibing, let them vibe. Yeah. And so long as you're not doing that all the time to where you become like somebody that doesn't socialize with others, then I think that's fine. And that's part of like, that's unfortunately, like, not unfortunately, but that's just part of social dynamics mm -hmm. is that that's part of is learning when to speak and when not to speak. Mm -hmm. um learning when is the time to raise these and, and just like sasha was saying when is it a time to raise these issues when is it a time not to yeah yeah sometimes i just have to let people vibe about harry potter even though jk rowling pisses me off like almost no one else on this planet <laughs> it is just so fucking yeah Mm -hmm. <laughs> so but that I, I know that we we don't talk about that here for that reason but i, I yeah think not that was a good it was, but and people have mentioned it before, and I've had to bite my tongue because I don't want to like I don't want to like kill their mood or make them think that they're a bad person because they're not. It's just you know I'm just sensitive to it, you know. Of <clears throat> All right. So yeah. Sasha, any last things on that topic? I th I uh, I think I'm gonna gonna talk more because I have have a couple of stories. <laughs> yes, you do. You you do. I've... But I think that we might get into that on the next. Yeah, I think that's yeah, what she's gonna I say for the next two. bit. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah, say okay. them because I have I have a case of we're gonna get to this. I have a case of like a, several different cases of like stirring the pot, breaking the rules, not reading rooms, or just like not caring about misreading the room. I can tell oh. you what happens, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure y'all, sure some of y'all know, but like insights about like where this goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to make sure we get to that. So yeah, let's let's um move to the next bit. Uh, okay, so the well the next bit is it's kind of in the same like how do how do you avoid conflict? And that's um the same thing with like sitting out, not being the the thump, you know, doing the thumper rule, all of that. Um but also you don't have to respond. Yeah. The the online forum is a very um convenient place for that tool to be used because it's a lot harder to not respond if you're having an argument in person 
Like it's, it looks just, weird. Like, it looks weird them. when you literally <laughs> just like stand up and walk away, right? Like that's a little yeah. that's a little strange. And, it, and it, takes a, <laughs> it takes a little bit more to do that. But <laughs> shutting the app, closing the DM, closing the chat, um, just sitting there and instead of sometimes I do this one instead of uh, responding to the chat, sending a DM to a friend who is might not be related at all to the to the situation but my like, look at this bullshit <laughs> just being like i have a i have a really great thing to say and i have a thing to say can i say it to you so i don't say it to this person so i can just kill this conversation yeah and a lot of yep. times your really great friends will be like sure and then you'll say it and they'll be like that was really great so proud of you for <laughs> not saying it in the chat and you just leave them on red like that <laughs> that is a very powerful tool that you have Yep. That's a tool that I really like to use. Like I like to do what I call IRL ignoring, which is like not, not blocking them, you know, not anything like that. Just being like, you know, I see that message and I'm just going to wait for the chat to move on to something else before I speak again. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, because it's online, it's, it's very, it's so much easier to do that. And you don't have to worry about it, you know, because the thing is, is you can just be like, like if it becomes an issue, you know, where conflict is, is starting to start and, and you just don't believe that it's that it's relevant or necessary. You can just be like, oh, I'm so sorry. I had to go do dishes or so sorry. The dog wanted to get out, go outside. That's why I disappeared. You know, you like you can just say stuff like that and it's fine. Um, and I and I find that for for conflicts that are not worth having, um, then uh, that is a very good strategy to to still, you know, let that that moment pass. Yes. I see that uh, on my head out. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Jane. Um, that is a good that is a good one, especially because a lot of people can um, tell if there's a conflict ha like that has either happened or about to brew that they will try to like as a group mentality change the subject. Mm -hmm. um, try to negate from that. Try to go from that. Or if a mod is online, trying to like navigate away from that subject so that you get then can kind of sweep it under the rug, pretend it never happened. Um, <laughs> and that way, like, the people involved can talk again without having to necessarily engage in the same conversation that they were having. Yeah, so if you see something going, if you're like a mod in a position, or, or somebody that's been in the role play for a long time in a position of authority, that's something that you can do. If you see a conflict starting that's unnecessary, um, now I'd say don't overuse this, right? Because, like, sometimes it's, you know, let people squabble, sometimes it's fine. But, um, but if you see a conflict brewing that is like super unnecessary, then you can do that. You can like bring up another topic and, uh, or, or bring it up in another way that kind of like diffuses that situation. You know, conflict, I... um, conflict diffusion is a, is a skill, a good skill for moderators to have. Yes. Have I been known to ask fellow people to change the subject for me because I can't? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I have never gotten a DM from Landon that said, Karen, are you online? Can you help me change the subject? That's never, ever happened. <laughs> talk about something else? Like the weather with me so that I just don't keep ripping into this person. <laughs> <laughs> Landon is clearly not Landon clearly does not have the conflict averse problem that we've been mentioning. Oh no, I am I am not the conflict averse problem. I am the yeah, no, I am sometimes there are times where Karen's like, Landon, will you fucking stop? <laughs> it's like, this is a little never unnecessary, said my that friend. To me. No, She's usually never usually said that to me. No, usually I, I say like, LOL. <laughs> usually I say like usually I say something like, Landon, this isn't necessary right now. We can do this later. Like, this isn't yeah. a big, or I'll say like, this is, this really is not a big deal. Like, I'll say that. <laughs> um, or, or you could tell also by the LOLs, the amount of spacing in the, between the letters in which Karen is not enough of my shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm like, ah, three spaces per letter probably should stop. <laughs> spaced out lols are a very different tone than the lol altogether <laughs> sometimes they're actually funny sometimes they're not you get, it's a, it's a <laughs> this is how well you you have to learn to know each other to sit there and be able to dissect each other's lols yeah and i think anyway. something that something that i see happen a lot with this that that i want to mention also is is i believe that we are you know our society is very competitive which i've railed about before um you know i I have a, I have a, I have a very um, competition averse person. I don't like it, so um, I hate seeing it all the time. And so, um, you know, I think where this comes from is people feel like 
the last word is the winner you know and you see this a lot in in like online debate bro blood sports argument debate things where it's like whoever talked the most or whoever gets the last word in is the perceived winner but again like don't go into it from a position of winning go into a position into a position of like compromise and understanding and uh and you won't ever have to deal with all that kind of shit Yes. So don't try to win. If you see the conflict brewing, even if you're like a very conflict, you know, not avoidant person and you're you're chill with that and you're going to be like, okay, let's have a conflict. Like, I still think it's important to not try to win. And Jed, and this, don't worry about, about, don't worry about knowing the context. We have, we have the VOD, so you're always welcome to go back and watch the beginning. <laughs> as, as for winning, the thing is, is that, by the way, having the best, we'll get more into this on later, having the best point and being right does not mean that you win. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, it does not. True. <laughs> True. 100%. Yeah. So yeah, that's um, really the main thing that I wanted to say about that. Um I think yeah. that that we can move to like, you know, let's let's stop talking about avoiding conflict. Let's um let's move let's move to some more like um, you know, other elements of conflict that we want to advise on. Well, the first one that I think very quickly we just need to mention is passive aggression. Oh. Um, I think that because we're online, a room is a lot harder to read. Mm-hmm. Uh, so things tend to come off naturally more passive-aggressive than I think that they're intended to. Yes. But when you're truly being passive-aggressive, it's so fucking obvious to everyone that it's not passive. It's just aggressive. <laughs> 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 uh, and I think that uh, in, in, in role play groups we can kind of see it a little bit better because we get to know each other like you see each yeah. other's writing all the time because you see the in character and the out of character so in that situation you can kind of read it a little bit better um, and uh, even though like if you're if you're talking about like a different type of form like maybe reddit or something where you don't have those bonds with people then you can read passive aggression where it doesn't exist <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. we're talking about role play where you tend to have like little communities, pockets of communities where people tend to get reputations, you know, as, uh, as Sasha had mentioned, then you can, you kind of know when someone's being passive aggressive. Yes. And you can, and, and it's, it doesn't take an expert to read that room. Uh, Cause especially if it's happening in like group chats, people, people know, see it. Um, mm -hmm. And that can be really difficult sometimes for a community because no one likes to be passive aggressive. Um, and usually passive aggressive, what it does typically is brew more passive aggression. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that is one of the uh, difficult things that as, as an RPer, we, as a mod, at least, I have seen happen, um, and also as an RPer that I have definitely fallen into, not a trap necessarily, because I saw it coming, um, however, it is my pet peeve, so anything after, if it's two words, or if it's like two or one word after a comma, I know you're being a passive-aggressive, so things like, well then. Or, or like all of a sudden you start okay, writing whatever. periods at the end of your sentences. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Being like, instead really of just instead of just no, just... it's like no period. <laughs> it's like oh. Like, oh okay. <laughs> uh, let me fall into this thing that I know is happening. Um, I <laughs> it is not a strong suit of mine. It's because I am not converse. I am not conflict diverse. So that's when it comes out that I'm like, oh, you want to let's let's not do that because you're not going to win this. And then that's also my other problem. Lynn is like, Lynn is like, oh, they want to fight. They want to fight. They want to fight. Yeah, yeah, let's fight. There are times <laughs> where I'm in DMs where I'm like, let me have them, please. And I'm like, no. There's so many spaces to be the LOLs at that point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Erica had a funny comment. Who needs passive aggression when you can have aggressive aggression? Yeah. I don't know. I kind of agree, to be honest. Like, I would rather someone just, like, tell me they're pissed than to be, like, no dot. And then me be like, Please. okay. <laughs> that is my favorite oh my thing. Please just let me know you dislike me so that yeah. I don't have to try to get you to bait, bait it out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be listen. Okay, so this is here's like one this is like one of the two stories uh, yeah, somebody tell. Or kind or actually no like it kind of is both but i'll i'll save the full story but like passive aggression is great for when you want people 
people to know that you dislike them, but you don't want to get banned. Like, the entire strategy <gasps> is to communicate to somebody else that you want to punch them, but punching is not allowed. <laughs> so you're like, how do I... How do I, like, provoke you, but not get in trouble for it? Or, like, oh. what, are, what are some ways that I can, like, accidentally elbow you in the side? <laughs> so that's, that's, that's the kind of the, the, the idea with passive aggression. Sasha's like, out here, like, looking where all the security cameras are. Like, how can I angle this so no one sees? <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Sasha's passive aggression. I have fallen for it once or twice. No, that's not true. <laughs> um. so, I mean, the thing is, is that any, any people, as said, people know that like what you're doing, like my passive oh, yeah. aggression is clear. But when you, when you go to arrest me and there's no camera footage, I'm like, <laughs> better luck Try next it. time. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand what happened. Like, I don't think other people are necessarily as like, there's, there's like my strategies go both ways like so like other people might not think about this as hard but like you kind of intuitively know like what like what can i get away with or you're actually passive aggression is about testing what you can get away with and it's about trying to test the temper of the other person so you're like okay i can't start a fight or i will be seen as the bad guy so i can't confront you because, you know, I, I know Landon and I aren't conflict averse. We don't care for the bad guy. We're like, yeah, I'll twirl my mustache over here. Bring yeah, it on. <laughs> but, most, but most people are like, I don't want to be seen as the bad guy. I'm trying to maintain the perceived moral high ground. So how can I trick the other person into blowing up? And that is what passive aggression is about. It's about kind of seeing if you can get the other guy to bed. Or somebody seeing if they can get you to bed. Mm, it sounds like a bait thing. It's a, it's baiting. It's it's straight up baiting. And instead of and sometimes like sometimes there are conflicts that you can resolve where it's just like, hey, like we have like a misunderstanding about a plot, and like, but I don't want to continue this like bad vibe with you. Or you can like go into somebody's DMs and be like, hey, we had an understanding. Or like, hey, did I do? Sometimes like someone's being passive aggressive at you, and you're like, did I do something to upset you? Like sometimes you don't know. You're like, did I do something wrong? Like, can you explain to me what I did wrong? like so that i can i can stop doing it but other times you you know and you just don't care or like let's say that um someone just doesn't like you and then there's nothing to be done by going into their dms and being like hey is is there something i can i can do to clear this up because there's not and the only thing you can do is like just consciously disengage mm. Yeah, sometimes personalities just don't mesh, right? And um, and you know, you just you just can't. It's so, there's just not a platform where you can get along with a certain person. That happens for sure. And you have to be careful about passive aggression, like whether you are on the receiving end of it or participating in it, because passive aggression will always tend towards aggression. It is a slope. You are sloping downwards at all times towards like an explosive conflict. Do not think you can be passive aggressive forever. You cannot. So sooner or later, you are going to have to decide one way or another whether you want this to go into full-on aggressive conflict or whether you want to step back. Passive aggression cannot be sustained. Oh, that's a good point. I do feel like, um, you know, some people do think that they that passive aggressive is going to, like, uh, diffuse the conflict and eventually it's going to go away. And, and you're right, I don't find that to be true in most cases. I think in most cases, then um, it causes it to escalate until it turns out in turns into actual fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> yeah, passive aggressive. It's just, it's no go. It's no good. Please don't do it. <laughs> don't. People <sighs> do yep. not be baited either. Address well, no, the problem, uh, yeah, absolutely. Or... Don't or be just disengage. Yeah. Fun as it is. I know that it's fun, guys. I know that it's fun, but resist. It will, <laughs> it will it's, a, it's a short term fun that has long term consequences. And also True. recognizing the result that, of getting kicked out. <laughs> and also recognizing that all of us at one point in time have done both. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. that we are and still sometimes, uh for me at least, I can't speak to the other two. But um, are not always the best examples because 
we're humans and humans fall into patterns mm -hmm. and that happens so it's it's important to point that out as well yeah and i think um and i think that's a, another thing that, that we can say in regards to this as far as like how we can tell when someone's being passive aggressive and all of these things like we can't everybody can't tell because they're like so good at reading people you know it, it's not like that oh everyone's everyone's so smart and you're you're dumb they can all tell like that's not what it is people can tell because they have also done the same thing <laughs> because yeah. we're all the same and we all do this stuff yeah no we all we all do it yeah it's fine we've all done um, it <laughs> yeah so kind of sasha hinted that there was a story or two and yes, so geez. uh our next thought on here is like stirring the pot, bending the rules. Um, Miss Sasha, would you do you have anything to say about this? <laughs> what do you have to say about this, Sasha? <laughs> this is one of this is one of my all time favorite stories. I love this story so much. It was it was so funny at the time. So this is old. So to date myself, I am thirty now. This happened like nine years ago. So this is when I'm like twenty one. And the specific thing that I did is I was part of a large role play directory and I was into social justice. Now, back in 2012, it was not cool to be into social justice as it is in many places now where even people who dislike social justice are at least like aware of the movements. And I, I was bored and I was too smart. And so what did I like to do for fun? I love to start intersectionality conversations. I love oh. to talk about that. Oh, I yeah. love you. Oh, yes. In, on role play forums oh, yes. where you know that's gonna be welcome and everyone wants to do that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> this is everyone's happy fun time fantasy space. And I would like you to think about the fact that the fact that you only role play white characters maybe makes you kind of racist. Like, oh. <laughs> You're a riot at parties, okay, Sasha. Well, <laughs> oh my god, I'm, I am a riot at parties. So the thing is, is like, I was smart enough not to break obvious rules. Like, I wouldn't call you a racist to your face. No, no, no. That would, that would get me in trouble. What I would do is I would describe behaviors or I would describe situations that I knew applied to people and of course they're just like you are you're coming at me and i'm like i don't know like i don't know what you mean or i i had like a socratic method where i would ask a series of questions where if you were foolish enough to try and answer them i'd be like i would set you up and so like whenever i was in a thread like a meltdown was impending every time if i was there people were going to lose it sooner or later just like foaming at the mouth and so i had like i had my supporters who were just like yay sasha like i would be kind of the the lead charge and i'd have like some calmer personalities follow me to be like well with sasha you know like i understand if you agree disagree with sasha but here's like the nicer version of the point it was like a like a the forking strategy like between the horns or like people just thought it was funny sorry do you train Ch -ch yeah, apparently the asshole decided to just blow it right outside my house, even though there's no streets nearby. That's fine. That's okay. You just can you mute yourself for a second for the train, and then you can unmute when Sasha's finished with her story. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's gone. The train is over. Oh, good. But, um, <laughs> so, anyways, there was there was an administrator there who I actually became friends with for a while, and he was like a huge influence on my. Uh, on my administrating strategies that I have to this day. So shout out to this guy. Um, but he bans me. Like he for he kind of befriended me at first. Like he chatted he like approached me outside of the forum and like chatted me up and then he bans me. He's just like just straight up like completely bans me. And there was like like a huge kerfluffle about it. Like the people who hated me like like were like she's a bully and we're glad she's gone. Like openly celebrated yeah, I was this device that they openly celebrated the fact that I'm gone and my supporters claim that I'm being censored. Like, they're like, this is censorship. This is unfair. Somebody wrote a public letter to the staff and they were like, why was uh why was she, why was sasha banned like i feel like you know sasha could be like kind of a hot personality at times but i just i don't feel like she had broken any rules and so like why was she banned if she didn't break any rules and the administrator i became friends with 
says this. He like publicly replies and he was like, listen, like I like I think Sasha's great. Like I respect her. She's highly intelligent. I, I see her points, but we have seen a pattern that whenever she enters a space, like it the space becomes harder to control. And even though she was not breaking any rules, like that was like the conflict that she caused was like consistent and significant and we're just we're just not going to allow it anymore. We will not unban her. And he wrote it so well that I, the person who was banned, was like Yeah, fair. Like smart guy. <laughs> like, okay. Okay, I lose. I can I concede to your authority, and I went on to it to work as an administrator on one of his future roleplay sites. I respected him so much for kicking my ass, but um, but yeah, like I was right. I was right about there being like these racist problems. I was right about people's crappy opinions and thoughtlessness. I hadn't broken any rules, but. Like, that's the thing, like, just because you're not breaking any rules does not mean that you are not a problem. And being right does not mean that you are not causing, like, undue conflict, like, conflict that may be beyond the scope of the space that you're in. Like, were these things important to me as an ally? Yes. But also, like, putting people in a constant state of distress was maybe not the best thing to do like i i like eventually made enough enemies and like what like was annoying enough that even though there were members who were like had much more like we'll say problematic opinions than mine they did not receive the same level of censure and so like one of the things that people i think happens with people is they're like well i'm not breaking any, any rules and i'm right so like what what's the problem and it's like just because you're right does not mean that you have license to be an endless disruption in various spaces unless those spaces are designed for disruption or they claim that they are like going to handle that disruption or unless those disruptions are like small like every space on the internet is not a space for disruption and places are going to be resistant to that. Like, you do not protest inside of a Starbucks. Like, you protest out on the street. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so you can't be, you cannot be mad or claim ignorance if you protest inside of the Starbucks. Like, your, your mission is true, and I can support you as I supported myself, but don't be surprised and when you have it coming and don't think that you will be protected by the fact that there's not necessarily a rule against what you are doing mm -hmm. and i think we i've experienced that too where i've had to like not not like that in that regard but where i've had players that i asked them to cut it out and they said oh well it's not in your rules can you add it to your rules <laughs> no no i no i will not add it to my rules You'll just you'll just listen to me because I own I am the owner of this space and I'm asking you to stop because it's not conducive to the space we're trying to run like that should be enough for you you know um <laughs> and I'm not a tyrant like I explain and explain and explain everything I do and everything I'm asking you know and I know not all admins are like that some just tell you some shit and they expect you to like you know when you say jump how high like that's not what I'm doing. Um, I will answer all of your silly questions till kingdom come, but I am not ever going to add it to my rules so that, so that like you feel like the rules somehow match up with your exact behavior. Like, no, <laughs> that's ridiculous. And I don't think that should be expected. You know, um, sometimes it's not about what's written in the rules. Sometimes it's the spirit of the rules and i and i think that when we're talking about those types of conflicts where the the person like in sasha's case is technically right um then uh then that's more what we're talking about it's it's not about like the letter of the rules in the space it's about creating spaces that that people want to be in yeah yeah no it it is it's I hate, it's sorry, tough. It's, I, I hate it. No, I hate it when people are like, can you add that to the rules? It's like, no. Just, no, I will not. No, I will not add your specific situation to the rules. Don't be a dickhead. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, you're upsetting people. So stop upsetting people. 
you know and i think and I, and i think that this this still goes back to a lot of what we're talking about like Sasha, I don't know. Tell me if this is this is true in your case, but I, I'm sure you weren't doing that because you knew it would cause animosity. Like to you, it was like, oh, this is my allyship. I know I, it is causing me to make some friends. So let me continue this strategy of how I interact. You know, because some people did really like you in that situation, right? I mean, some once someone liked you enough to to say that you should be unbanned. No, like I'll I'll be honest with you here. I considered animosity like the the price of admission, which I think some of this is. <laughs> No, like, oh wow, that's, that's even deeper. That. No, that's that's it. I think that you know people are like, well, I am um, I am a knight in the in for truth. I'm a knight for justice. And if some people don't like it, then that just proves that my mission is noble. If mm. yeah, that's how I, that's how I know that I'm truly right. And so mm. I was like, yeah, I like the fact that I'm pissing all of you off is proof that I'm right. Oh. <laughs> it was also proof I was pissing them off. But for you, it was proof that you were right, because if you were if you were wrong, then they would have just been able to shrug it off. Yeah. Is that like the yeah, logic? It, or like, a part of it, part of it, it's like, um, yeah, like, their emotional response was, uh, was validating. Mm. For sure. Mm hmm mm hmm So it's kind of, it's, that sounds As a little bit kind of like the anecdote that you hear of, um, oh, they just want attention. You know, it's like, I mean, I guess, you know, people say that, but like attention is a, you know, human need. Of course, oh, we yeah. all want attention. Of course, we all need attention, like shock and awe. People are human and they want other humans to pay attention to them. Yeah, I think that's said in like a really derogatory way. And like, so of course I wanted attention, but I also wanted to talk about something that I was passionate about. I wanted to talk about something that I found like intellectually stimulating. I wanted to entertain myself. And if that just if that happened to disturb some people, I was like, yeah, whatever. Um, and I did want to say, as for like not adding things to rules on Barbermonger, I have like some of the loosest rules you will ever see. I have very few problems with. Bro, like, the day you added rules at all to Barbermonger, I was shocked. <laughs> I was yeah, like, we I, have I, rules I, here. We have rules here now. I, what I, is I, this? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, like, that's the thing. Like, I am a person that does not need any explicit rules to moderate, given my community is, like, um, fairly small. I would say, like, there's, there's, you know, several hundred people, but, like, very few of them talk. But mm -hmm. in general, like, I don't need a rule to tell you to not be racist. I don't need a rule to tell you not to pick excessive fights. Like, mm -hmm. basically, like... This is a Starbucks, ma'am. This is an Arby's. And if you, like, come and start, like, throwing feces around the Arby's, like, I'm going to kick you out. Like, I don't need yeah. a rule <laughs> for that. Why I don't you have a it. no feces rule, Sasha? <laughs> I don't. I, and the other thing is, is, like, I'll, I'll say this. Like, rules can be turned back against, like, moderators and administrators. If you are a person listening to this and you're like, okay, I want to try and like kind of contain conflict or spot it i think rules are rules can often be an attempt to like preempt conflict like okay if people don't do these things if i say like don't be racist then i am going to preempt there being racist conflict you also have to be careful because people can turn your rules back against you sometimes you will have a dork in chat and someone needs to put them into a locker like someone just needs <laughs> to be like bro you are being super awkward and unpleasant right now and just like what you're doing is not cool give me that and if you... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Landon, i'm not sure if you've seen it but in karen's server i'm sometimes this person i'm just like i have I, to I, yeah. where i will just run up on somebody and like trip them and be like stop that right now and like <laughs> stop it and there can be like there can be kind of a kind of community moderation where sometimes like if someone comes in and is like, well, I hate Britney Spears, like and you have like four people who like just laugh at them and they're like, yeah, bro, whatever. Like the person who said they hated Britney Spears will go to the mod and be like, everybody bullied me and you have a rule against bullying. And it's like, hmm, like you have to be careful <laughs> about you have to be careful about people who will like who will basically violate the spirit of your rules without without breaking an actual rule and then you will have people who will technically break rules without violating the spirit of the rule and part mm -hmm. of nav and part of navigating like these kinds of conflicts is like okay once again like what is really going on here like what do what do the different parties want 
and like what do i want for like what do i want out of a role play what do i want out of a plot what do i want in a group what do i want out of my community Mm -hmm. and that that will direct how you respond because like again this person that banned me saw my contributions as valuable enough to put me in a trusted position of power elsewhere like they, I was not well like, I think they I think they felt like you learned your lesson right like I think they felt I, like okay she gets it now <laughs> I mean I continue to be caught like look please don't don't think that this was like my my come to Jesus moment where I stopped being <laughs> annoying but I I did learn I don't oh, oh so here's the other thing oh I guess like <laughs> no to bean I made a second account on that website and he was like I know you have a second account don't tell me what it is and I'm not going to try and find out and there were and when he stepped down and other administrators came these people were like on like a witch hunt for me for like months and they could not figure out who I was and he was like I just I just don't care just like please don't be as dumb as you were again and I was like <laughs> deal done deal they did eventually catch me again but it took them a hot minute it took them a hot minute, like another like six to eight months. But uh, but no, but the, the point of that is, is that like, yeah, just rules. Rules can be used against you. They can be or people can uh, can manipulate the rules and get around them or violate them without breaking technical rules. They can. And, and, this, and one. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and like to bring this back to conflict, like again, this is like when you're just like, why, like, why do people dislike me? I'm not breaking any rules. It's like, think about it. Think about how other people feel. Maybe you aren't the only person in the world with feelings. Have you thought about that? Really? Are you sure? I thought I was the only person whose opinion matters and with feelings I'm, and things. I'm the main character and nobody else exists. You're right. I'm, I'm pretty sorry, sure that that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and to kind of like uh, to kind of talk, uh, you know, back a little bit about sometimes, you know, you feel like what you're doing is justified and right and things like that. Um, you know, so people don't learn through conflict, at least in that way, like they don't people don't learn that they're being racist or sexist or whateverist um, through being told how racist they're being in that moment you know it's a slow process that takes gentleness and and uh and calm and you know not everyone is necessarily uh, um possible or available to do um you know you're you're rewriting what what years and years of growing up in society has taught this person so i just think that when it comes to like things like things like that where you are like justified in that conflict um it's important to to think about like okay is initiating this conversation actually going to help the person be less racist and if the and answer I is no then you have to be you have to be careful about how you navigate that conversation yeah i i think that there are times that there that it is though that it is oh yeah mm-hmm. and that Going about it in the way that Sasha went about it is a valid way that sometimes some people listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, yeah, it is. I guess what is what is your purpose? Why are you doing this? Yeah, um, is a is always a good question to ask. Yeah, I think, and it might be to... best in those situations. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say I just wanted to start wrapping up because we have a couple more things we need to talk about, and it is getting cut to forty five. So. Okay, okay. So if this if that type of topic interests you, we do have an episode. Um, I can't remember what the name of the episode is, Landon. Maybe you can you can remind me um, where we talk about like playing characters that aren't like you and some of the issues with that and yeah. things of that nature. So if this if this topic interests you, if you're like hearing like, oh, you know, I want to hear more about like racism and sexism and things like that in the role play community, go watch that episode. It's great. Yes, I think that that was episode. 21 somewhere around there somewhere around, somewhere around there uh, yeah. yeah um and and of course we we talk and we've also talked about gender and sexism and, and all of that and racism yep. within these and, and playing different styles um but yeah yeah so go check that out for more on that okay yes we can move on now all right um the last part of how you might be part of the problem without realizing you're part of the problem is hanging out with people who annoy you um 
or if you're annoyed by like your partner in general, I more picked this out as a group RP dynamic. Um, there are many a times where you wake up or you log on and maybe the chat is full of people talking about things that you're not interested about and that you don't really necessarily get along with the people who are talking. Mm -hmm. um, putting yourself in that chat might not be the smartest decision. <laughs> <laughs> what, whatever do you mean? <laughs> you, you just might, surprisingly enough, um, set yourself up for uh, feeling annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> um, shock and awe amazing shock and awe. yeah I mean if you don't particularly like somebody in real life you wouldn't necessarily go out of your way to hang out with them yep. uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with not vibing with someone or not particularly liking something. someone I think that sometimes there is this idea that in a group you have to like every single member that's not true Mm -hmm. um, you have to be polite and kind to every single person, but I don't think you have to be, you have to like them. Yeah. Um, so sitting there and like trying to initiate conversation with people you don't vibe with is going to, uh, <laughs> you're not going to vibe with it. You're not going to get anything <laughs> positive out of the conversation because you know you've already tried at this point, assuming you know you don't vibe, vibe with yep. them. So guys, I can um, sense that we're probably going to run past time. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go pee real quick. That's, that's all I want to say. Y'all keep going. How dare you? <laughs> Cause I don't think um, we're going to end it too. I think we're going to go run a little over. So I'll be right back. A little over. Okay. <laughs> um, so then, yeah. So then you, um, you continue. And then also like on top of that, you're not really interested in the subject that they're talking about. Um, it's say they're talking about, I don't know, Italian food and you don't like pasta. Sitting there and, and having a conversation about things that you don't particularly feel positive about with people you don't particularly feel positive about isn't going to result in a positive action. And I felt like I needed to raise my voice for that because I don't think people listen to that. I think that they go, oh, we're, you know, um, everyone's supposed to get along and I and I want to interact and I want to chat with everybody or I want my opinions to be heard um but that like no don't do that because you're going to come off annoyed or you're going to be annoyed and that eventual annoyance will lead to an emotional outburst yes oh god oh god yes <laughs> oh, oh god man. it I, I'm, I wanted, I want to wait for Karen to get back from going to the bathroom, but just, oh. this is like, this oh, is, so a, I, I have, is... I have wireless earbuds, so I could hear y'all the whole time. You just wouldn't be able to hear me because the microphone's in here. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, we went to the bathroom with her. It's really sweet. That's, yeah. Wow, <laughs> you did. <laughs> he did. It was, it was, uh, <laughs> it was a very intimate experience. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah no this is this is another situation where like this i i can provide a lot of a lot of negative examples i've, I've learned from these things i will say like from my first story like i it took me a while I, I had to learn this lesson several times but it's like what do you want out of a space and also like what kind of person do you want to be perceived as do you want to be perceived as the problem child are you ready and willing to bear <laughs> all of the weight of that role because it's heavy if you are the one always starting yeah. the conflict like you are gonna kind of feel bad like people are gonna see you that way you're gonna feel kind of pigeonholed yeah like, it, like it's it's heavy it, and it will get to you and you, you have to like go ahead keep going sorry i was gonna say if you think it is hard writing the villain in an rp group imagine being the villain oh god <laughs> <laughs> It's tough. I have been the villain. Like I like literally I have been cast as that person and it's lonely. It's difficult and you can you can find it difficult to connect with other people. And so like like you're painting yourself as the anti-hero, but if other people are seeing you as the villain, like is that really what you want or is that really what you want to go for? And how is that going to like how is that going to affect kind of your role play experience as well? Because I wasn't role playing on like this discussion forum. It was like role play discussion. It wasn't actual role playing. But the story I'm about to get into is going to touch on like, all right, guess who's going to IR IRL role play as the villain again? It's me, your friend Sasha. And 
So, uh, being, being in this space that annoyed me, I joined this role play, and, like, right away, I can kind of tell that I am around a bunch of sensitive snowflakes. Like, people have the right to be sensitive, and they have the right to be snowflakes, but I am, while a, a snowflake, I am not sensitive. And, and, and this is tricky because if you're, like, I am, like, in the LGBTQ community, like, you want a space that's, you know, like, friendly to diversity, like, sex, gender, race, but for me, that's a tough, a tough thing to balance because I am also not sensitive. So, like, I find myself pulled between spaces, like, where I find that things are more, like, more open to diversity people can get too sensitive and where people aren't sensitive they can kind of be dull as far as like diversity wise so i kind of find myself wobbling between sometimes or i'm annoyed in one space and also annoyed in the other but anyways find a role play i immediately detect <laughs> that there are like significant differences between me and the core member base they're more sensitive than me they post slower than me they tend to prioritize creating characters over writing they are all huge kiss ups to the the server owner the site owner and i just i hate all of this immediately i'm like oh <laughs> it's like it's like Sasha's top ten of annoying roleplay groups. <laughs> yeah, yes. But I, I had joined it with a friend. I liked the layout. I felt like I could do things with the site lore, and so I I have two missions. One, my one mission is to prove that I can play their game because it had like a complicated point system. And I'm like, watch this. I will win your game. I will win your game. That like it was kind of designed to be unfriendly to like new players or unfriendly to outsiders and kind of it favored the core member base with like giveaways and stuff like that and i'm like i will break your game i will break your system i will show you that i'm as good as you by playing with a handicap and two i will convey my dislike of you passively i will find a way to criticize everything you do <laughs> out the side of my mouth but in, in, in a way where I'm not technically, again, I'm not technically breaking any rules. But just, like, these people, like, I I also, like, I did, like, I went back and forth. Like, sometimes I would try to join in conversations and be friends with them. Or I'd try to be friendly, but, like, people would ignore me after a certain point. Like, after I kind of get off on the wrong foot with them, there's no recovery. Only some people will kind of be friendly to me. It's very limited. I end up writing with, like, almost exclusively my one friend. Very limited circle of people. Um, this goes on for a while. Like, pretty much the super popular people will not associate with me. Which doesn't matter to me, because at this point I'm winning, by my definition. <laughs> well, eventually... <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, one night I make my last smug comment not realizing it's going to be my last smug comment i just like i criticize like one more thing about the point system and i wake up and in the middle of the afternoon i get banned i get banned for breaking a rule that did not exist i was basically banned like on the surface for being problematic but i technically hadn't broken any rules they invent two rules they invent two separate rules after banning me that i somehow broke that did not yet exist i am blocked by the admin before i can respond to them my ban i had people who were still in the server my ban is publicly announced and all of these people in general chat shit on me like they just like let loose like i hated sasha all along i had a bad feeling about her she was the worst just all like people really let their feelings out and i was so upset i was legit i was truly wounded i was like i have produced so much quality writing i have contributed to the site lore i played your stupid little game and like how could you do this to me I, f I like I felt like the victim here. Also, my by the way, my friend who has done nothing, who has committed no crime but associated with me, is also instantly banned. Like no appeal. And every and everybody, by the way, everybody in the server is told to block me. They're like, block Sasha. Do not communicate with her. And but I felt like the victim. I felt like the victim here. I was I was clearly being mistreated. Now that some time has passed, 
Was I being mistreated? Yes. These people invented rules and like just kind of did, they didn't like me and they just wanted to get rid of me. And so they finally came up with an excuse to do so. It's not like it, I hadn't really hurt anybody, I hadn't done anything wrong, but it was annoying. At the same time, I like, I remember when I, Karen will tell you, Karen, and I joined this site and I bitched about these people. On multiple occasions, I went to Karen and was like, <laughs> let me tell you how annoying I find these people. Like, yep. it got to the point where I had to mute the notifications for the server and like look at it as little as possible because if I looked at these conversations, I just wanted to hit these people in the head. They were just so yeah. precious. I was and, friends with Sasha and, during her during her whole stint in this role play. So I got the play by play over the I guess I don't know year two years that that you were in that it was role about play. A year. Yeah, it was about, about a year. year. Yeah. So and yeah, this is all not... accurate what she's saying. Um, <laughs> she would message me and be like, "Oh my god, I can't stand this," and I would have to be like, "Okay, Sasha, but you don't have to contribute to these conversations. It's okay. Like you can let them be snowflakes. It's okay." <laughs> Oh like they're God, super annoying Karen. but just let them be annoying in their little corner <laughs> uh karen like I, I will go to karen and i will essentially kind of already know what karen's going to tell me and I'll <laughs> but you want to hear it anyway for some reason <laughs> well it's because i i you know i don't want to role play as you in my own head karen you know i like to, I like to I oh like that's to nice <laughs> that so is I want nice. to talk to imaginary Karen. But but the point <laughs> I want to get across to you guys here is that I put myself in this situation. I I knew from the beginning kind of what I was getting into. I put myself in a position where I was annoyed with these people. I put myself in a position where I would be like emotionally in an emotionally heightened state where I would be passive aggressive. I was not able to contain my criticisms which were wholly unwelcome on every level this was not a, like by no means was anybody interested in what i had to say about my about many things and i knew <laughs> that i i knew that and i kept doing it and it's like i could have saved myself a, a lot of grief if i either just like had looked at this situation and been like this is going to be too frustrating for me i should leave or just like realizing, thinking harder about like, do I want to start this conflict? Is this how I want to be perceived? Do I want to be the bad guy? Because guess what people do when you're the bad guy? They try to kill you. Like, <laughs> Amazing. That is, it, <laughs> that is how it goes. If you if you set yourself up as the bad guy, you cannot be surprised. And I know that it can be it can feel attractive to be the bad guy if you have if you feel like an outcast if you feel misunderstood if you feel like well no one's ever gonna like me anyways what's the point i might as well be dark gloomy annoying critical like no nothing is ever hopeless and just maybe like it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy i was annoyed by them i became annoying and they smote me for being annoying so <laughs> <laughs> like if you find yourself in these situations maybe just leave avoid the conversations avoid the people leave the role play i know sometimes that means giving up things that you like but sooner like i have to go to therapy and whine about this you guys like i have like i, <laughs> I, paid, I, like, I paid somebody to be like i got i like by the way and i have to explain role playing to my therapist and i have to be like let me explain to you this thing that upset me. I got banned from a roleplay forum, and now I'm sad. <laughs> and now I'm sad. <laughs> I love that you found a therapist, though, that was willing to, like, listen to that. And, um, and like, okay, well, what is it? <laughs> you know, I think that's wonderful. I hate her. I hate her. She is contractually yeah. obliged to listen to whatever I say and to learn about whatever I order her to learn about. And that's <laughs> wonderful way, which, I was going to say, the wonderful thing about therapy is that literally they have to be interested. Or at least they have to pretend to be interested. If they're I think thing. when it comes to role play, it's so niche that people might even struggle to pretend to be interested. Although, you know, I love you guys, the, the Wolves Den guys. I see y'all popping in the chat every once in a while, like Mo Moisey just did it, um, and telling me how much you love listening to it, listening to us talking. You have no clue what we're going on about. I do appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yes thank, thank you for thank you for listening but uh, but yeah no i i like sent my therapist my role play threads and i had to explain like i'm only writing half of this and it just like blew her mind <laughs> it's so I, this is always a conversation that's so off topic 
Roleplay has never seemed okay. niche to me. Everyone, like, I guess maybe that's because I have so much, like, D&D people in my life that they're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. It's D&D, but writing, that makes sense for you. And I'm like, yeah, basically. That is exactly what it is. <laughs> that yeah. Is, that is exactly <laughs> what it is. So, like, therapists have never had a problem with that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I love that story. I love that story so much, Sasha, because I feel like it really encapsulates a lot of the emotions that people that continually enter conflict are dealing with. So hopefully you guys, like if you're relating to some of this and being like, oh my God, I'm the conflict person. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm initiating it. Like you can kind of listen to that story and, and feel like, feel a little bit seen and feel like, okay, it's okay because there are so many role plays out there, y'all. There's so many role plays. It, I mean, if Sasha can screw up like that and then go find another role play and, and move on and still be happy in her hobby, like you can too. It's okay. There is nothing wrong with joining another role play where people don't know you. There's nothing wrong with changing your username when you've gotten a bad reputation and trying again. Like, and that is, that is what I would love for anybody that feels that way to have as their takeaway from that story. I will say, like, what would, you know, just, just to kind of play, like, devil's advocate, like, let's say that you are, but what if you were these other people, and you have a Sasha come in, mm. and, you, and you're like, what, <laughs> what is this person's deal? Like, they're so annoying, tell, everyone dislikes so, them. <laughs> they're so annoying, and everyone dislikes them. I will tell you this. If I had had one of those popular people kind of reach out to me, like, on a genuine level to connect with me and be like, I'm going to find a way to roleplay with this annoying person. Or like, I'm going to find something to talk with them about. Or I'm going to find a way to include them in conversation anyways. I am going to validate them. Let me tell you guys, it would have completely changed the game because... I can I can just I can tell you that like when I am when I have been in other social situations and I'm kind of being annoying and sometimes and somebody responds to me by like engaging with me and being like yeah okay I'm like I think Britney Spears is annoying and they're like yeah you know I can see what you're saying like I, I hear I hear you do, you do you like this though or like what do you think about this like someone who doesn't like shut me down but people like kind of engage with me or like get, like provide me with an opportunity to be not annoying oh my god I become like 80% less annoying so quickly when people give me the benefit of the doubt or show me any kind of kindness I'm just I just wither I <laughs> like it just completely declaws me if you are dealing with one of these annoying people I encourage you to try to like be nice to them or form a personal connection it won't work some of the time some people like really some people like who are like this can't handle intimacy or connection like they don't know how to connect like positively and that's why they're so conflict generating but sometimes like the person who's kind of fussing in public just wants to be understood or just wants to feel included and if you like find a way to make them feel included they won't feel the need to try and suck up attention by creating conflict anymore because they'll have their niche they'll have their thing they'll feel like they're part of the group but they won't feel like they have to disrupt the group in order to part to be seen in order to participate because on some level that's how i felt like i couldn't i just nobody ever talked about anything or like people rarely talked about anything where I felt like I could participate or all of these people like some of these people were roommates and they were having like roommate chat in the group chat all the time and they just did they just made no effort to be truly inclusive to other people mm. and so like and so if if the group is kind of like that if it isn't really friendly if it isn't making a point to connect with other people if it's not validating newcomers like maybe that is part of the th that can be part of the environment that is i will say catnip to the annoying person because because it enables all of your worst behaviors yeah and i think for for those admins out there that like you don't want your role play to be seen as clicky then that's basically how you do it. You know, not that I think necessarily having a clicky role play is bad at the end of the day, like it is a private club. So if you want to run your role play like that, fine. But then I think it's wrong to allow somebody that nobody likes to stay in your role play for a year and then ban them on a technicality, right? You know, like if you're going to be clicky, own it. But if you really don't want to be seen as clicky, then I do, I agree. Like it's important to engage those people, you know, that are doing that in your role play. That's just, you got to choose. You got to choose what you want. Yes, absolutely. 
just a little bit. It doesn't take much. It really doesn't for most people. They just want to know that they're a part of something. Yes. Oh, God. That's, I mean, that's, isn't that what we all just want? <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. I just want hip hats. Is that so wrong? <laughs> we want to find our people. And yeah. So, yeah. All right. Shall we move on to the best advice of when, uh, when faced with conflict? Yes. Um, so the first one that I want to mention is communicate, which I feel like I say every stream, <laughs> every stream. What what can you do to solve this problem? Communicate. <laughs> every problem that you've ever had leads back to communication. Mm -hmm. It's true. Mm -hmm. I'm not wrong. Every single problem. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it's an interpersonal activity that, you know, in a role play, it's that we're doing with each other, right? It's we're role players, we're writing, right? So use your words. <laughs> <laughs> talk uh that's gonna that's gonna help like resolve so many of these conflicts is just talk to the person you know figure out what the heck is going on with them so like i'll give an example um we had in our, our previous role play a particular individual who was just constantly like making people uncomfortable and upsetting them and um in character and out of character and it was awkward and it was weird and um so you know was eventually they sorry was I here for this? Do I know this story? Yeah, but we're not going to name names, so. Um, <laughs> I, just want, I, just want, I just wanted to know. Yeah, we're not going to name names, but yeah, it was the previous role play. And like, so, so really, really what we ended up doing is just, we would just DM the person and just talk to them and be like, what's going on? Because even though this person was like super annoying and problematic and causing issues, like at the end of the day, they're still a person and there's a reason that they are behaving this way. Right. So it's worth it to me to talk to them because there's a chance they could fix the behavior because it didn't. That's not what happened in this case. Eventually, they just left because they weren't going to fix it. But <laughs> but you know what? We gave them ample opportunity and we have had people where we did that, too. And then they fixed it. You know what oh, I mean? Absolutely. So My favorite, just talk. Yeah. And, and yeah, talk yeah. or just and this is where, it, and this is where, it also comes to mind where it's like, you don't know what the other person is saying or the tone of how things are being written. You can assume passive aggressive, but you could also assume aggressive, mm -hmm. or you can assume annoyed. You can assume all these feelings, but you don't really know. So if you really want to know, if you really want to know, and I'm saying that twice because, do you actually? <laughs> Sometimes you don't. <laughs> Sometimes we think we do. Sometimes we're like, do we actually want to know? And then like when it finds out, they'll be like, no, I find you annoying. Uh, that's just like <laughs> earth shattering. Um, <laughs> but no, it ask them, communicate, be like, hey, do you have a, do we have a problem? Is there an issue here? Or is it mm -hmm. just that we're or is there not an issue and I'm making it up? Like can, you can communicate that too, especially if you want to solve the conflict. If it's not, if it's something that you want to figure out and not have hanging over you. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think you should always, you should always want to solve the conflict. Like you should always want the conflict to reach a place where everyone can move, move on and, and be okay. You know, that oh. should be the goal. Maybe that's the healthy perspective of it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I want, to, I want to do assume good faith yeah oh that was gonna be the next one yeah 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 go for it go ahead okay okay so assume good faith is actually something that i learned from the guy who banned me from that website the first website that i talked to you about he was a wikipedia administrator and he like he taught me these things and i was like oh my god he was older than me by a couple of years like maybe like six six or seven years and he, so he was a little bit calmer but assume there's like an actual like on wikipedia if you if you look up like google like assume good faith wikipedia you will find this and i want to read it to you so it is a fundamental principle on wikipedia it is the assumption that editors edits and comments are made in good faith most people try to help the project not hurt it if this were untrue a project like wikipedia would be doomed from the beginning this guideline does not require that editors continue to assume good faith in the presence of obvious evidence to the contrary e.g. vandalism. Assuming good faith does not prohibit discussion and criticism. Rather, editors should not attribute the actions being criticized to malice unless there is specific evidence of such. 
When disagreement occurs, try as best as you can to explain and resolve the problem, not cause more conflict, and so give others the opportunity to, res to reply in kind. Consider whether a dispute stems from different perspectives and look for ways to reach consensus. So like, role playing like Wikipedia could not happen and could not function if people were not operating in good faith. If people were not trying to collaborate, our hobby literally couldn't exist. We could not make this work at all. So for the most part, most people are truly doing their best. Most people want things to work. And if someone seems like they're being annoying, that does not necessarily mean that they don't want things to work. And unless unless they have done something like that shows clear malice, it's better to assume that someone's having a bad day or a hard time and to ask them about it. Just when you, you know, like everyone makes mistakes, um, but most of the time we can correct such mistakes with simple reminders is what it says. So like people will make mistakes and like mess up. But if you assume that like, okay, like maybe they just didn't think about it. Maybe they were having a bad time. Maybe I didn't explain what I wanted. If you go into like any kind of confrontation, group or individual, and you just assume the best of other people, things will go so much better. Assume mm -hmm. that people don't know what you want. Assume that you haven't explained yourself. Assume, assume the best. Yeah. And first of all, you will hate people less because you will feel less like everyone is out to get you. And like everything that goes wrong is like a personal attack. And you also will get much better results from trying when you try to <laughs> confront when you confront people and try to negotiate. Well, see, here's the thing in something like role play that's fairly low stakes, like nobody's dying over bad role play, you know what I mean? Then when you go in and you assume good faith, even if the person's not in good faith, you kind of kill them with kindness. And I most people come around, you know, they really do. Um, Jane loved that comment so much that, uh, that she got some applause, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Jane. I, I appreciate that. But just, you know, like the thing is, is we are all kind of, we're all, all technically like alone in our rooms. We're alone on our phones. We're all alone in, alone on our computers. And to some degree, like that, that makes things feel different. Like we feel like the main character it is all about us or we're role playing our characters. And like our characters are clearly the most important one in the role play. Obviously. Nobody else understands, obviously. But like <laughs> when you, when you assume that people do want to get along with you or they, they want to make your plots work or they want you to be happy, like it goes it goes better and it's it's hard not to feel attacked when again you are sitting alone in your room on your computer there's no voice to hear there's no face to look at but just take a deep breath and just you know think the best of other people don't take your dis don't take the past or disappointments as like a reason not to give people the benefit of the doubt just because some people are bad just because like i as you can see i've had some bad experiences where i've gotten a boot so far up my butt like i felt it itch my brain like just because i've had these <laughs> bad experiences just because i've had disappointments i have been role playing for 20 years like i can like consecutively without breaks like I have, you know, had s such great stories. I have made close friends and the disappointments are learning experiences and opportunities. Like you don't have to, you don't have to become bitter. You don't have to become defensive. There are, there will be new people to meet, new role plays to try. There will be people where even if some people are acting in bad faith or being mean there will be other people who who don't so when you meet those new people like don't hold the bad behavior of of past people against them very well very said. well said mm -hmm. i i i want to emphasize that it's hard um because I think that that's important. I think that somebody who will hear that and sit there and be like, oh, that's super easy to do, but it's harder actually to do. Um, it's hard to assume that people are in a good faith. Like, because mm -hmm. you, not necessarily, not necessarily that people aren't good, but because of your own prejudices. If you don't particularly feel great about who you are as a person, you're not going to assume other people are going to, too. That's, that's, psycho that's like psychology 101. Um, so you're going to assume that other people dislike you. 
you're going to assume that you, that they're talking behind your back or X, Y, and Z and all of these insecurities that we have that we project that we have and project onto other people. And then it is our job that if you are assuming good faith to consciously make that change, to think about it. And it is a constant workaround of sitting there and being like, I have to change my thinking, even if it's really easy to say that I dislike this person just because I dislike them. Um, mm -hmm. So I do want to recognize that, that it is a hard step. It's not a quick fix. It's not an easy thing to just change. It is hard to do and it's hard work, but it does make life easier. We all get jaded at one point or another by someone wronging us. Like we all have that in our lives. And um, our, as, as amazing as our brains are, they're, they're really dumb in certain ways. And one of the ways is yeah. that they highly prioritize negative experiences and lowly prioritize positive experiences. So, um, you know, that's, that's the thing. We've all, we've all had these experiences. We've all gotten jaded. So we just have to remember that every day is still a new day. Your brain is doing that to you. And that's, that's not reality. Oh, well, I want. I also want to read one more thing. I just scrolled down on the Wikipedia article. It's called yeah. Good Faith in Newcomers. It's called Please Do Not Bite the Newcomers, which was, this is a rule that I also had to be taught. It is important to be patient with newcomers who will be unfamiliar with the culture and rules, but may nonetheless turn out to be value contributors. A newcomer's behavior probably seems appropriate to them, and a problem in that regard usually indicates underwear, unawareness or misunderstanding of the culture. It is not uncommon for a newcomer to believe that an unfamiliar policy should be changed to match their notion of how things should function, especially if they notice there is already some level of disagreement over the policy in question. Similarly, many newcomers want to have their contributions be accepted without question. Behaviors arising from these perspectives, while possibly misguided, are usually not malicious and should not be treated as such. So this is, I guess, one more thing about that, uh, about this, um, about the site where I was super passive aggressive. I had good ideas. My, my criticisms were not entirely unfair. If given the chance and I could have like, I think made some genuine improvements that would have like made the site a better place, not just for me, but for other people. And, but the thing is, is that if you like, let's say again, once again, so you're an admin and you have this person to come in here and they seem to be stirring the pot. They are just criticizing things left and right. One, consider that they may have points and two, consider that they just don't know how things work yet. They don't know how you do things. They don't know how your groups work. They might take some time to adapt to the culture. Just because someone seems to be like in a, in a position of conflict with you, you don't have to respond with like aggression or punishment. You might need to guide them. Like a response to conflict can be like, okay, I see what you're saying. I'm not going to escalate that. I will consider some of it and some of it you need to just adapt to. When someone engages in conflict with you, that does not oblige you to take it up to the same level. Or if you are in a position of power, if somebody disputes something with you or like, I don't know, seemingly disrespects you, like that it does not necessarily, that's not necessarily an invitation for you to smite them. Sometimes <laughs> like, Sometimes people get into conflict with you because you guys just don't know each other yet or, you know, you haven't had a chance to adapt to each other. Or sometimes people who come in with new ideas who like, like, I don't know, like maybe you are in the Harry Potter group and nobody has told you that J.K. Rowling is a turf. Maybe nobody has told you. And that can be super awkward. But on the other hand, like, God, if you didn't know that, can you like for us, that's easy. But like, can you imagine not knowing that like one of your favorite authors like uses her undue influence over her country to like take away other people's rights. I would want to know that. I, I mean, it was traumatizing when I that. learned it. I mean, it was awful, yeah. you know. <laughs> but, and, it, but and it also takes a while. Like that's the other thing too is the process behind learning that too. That if someone just learned this information and doesn't one hundred percent agree with you right off the bat, part of a process. Yeah, they're processing yeah. it. But yeah, but you don't, just because somebody you is like, know. I don't know. Yeah, if someone is new to your community and they seem to be like kind of stirring the pot right away, like do not, don't bite them. There is, there is a chance that they can be reformed. There mm -hmm. is a, like, a, like you don't have to like, you know, you, when you start conflict with somebody, you want to kind of know what you want and 
be able to like patiently address it and be clear. And if someone starts conflict with you, you need to, you still need to try and understand them just because they are the ones starting the conflict does not absolve you from keeping your side of the street from considering whether does this person have a point? Is there something I've missed about myself or my community? Mm -hmm. And the thing that you also have to understand with newcomers is it takes the average adult being exposed to a piece of information six times before they can actually commit it to memory and understand it. So what that means is that if somebody is really struggling with a certain element of your community, you might have to explain it to them a couple different times, a couple different ways. They might need to hear it from multiple people, you know, so where you see conflict because they keep asking the same dumbass question, they're really sometimes just trying to understand. It's not a dumb question for them. Mm-hmm. 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 All right. We have run over. I apologize, we everybody. Have. But this was a good conversation, so I just wanted to make sure we finished all of the advice at the end. Um, but is there anything else that we wanted to say? I think as far as this topic goes, um conflict is normal and when you avoid conflict the only thing you're the only person you're hurting is yourself mm -hmm. and you deserve better than that yeah i will say uh, sorry i didn't give y'all i didn't give y'all like any specific tips about like how do i approach my partner about the ship that i want i'm, I'm very sorry i was just here to give you like general life advice <laughs> <laughs> that you, the intelligent adult, will apply on your own. I have faith in you, listener. I believe in you. <laughs> we never get super specific here. I feel like I'm sure there's somebody out there that's that's given up on us because we never get specific enough. But <laughs> that's because every situation is different. Please just tell me what to say to approach a shipping partner. Guess what? Everyone's unique, and we cannot give you a play-by-play. -play. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I, I write landed. Like, where's my instruction manual? How am I supposed to get through life like this? How am I supposed to get <laughs> Sasha to simp me? I don't understand. Oh. <laughs> mm. Oh. <laughs> because I'm really good at just seeing someone's soul and knowing exactly how to gut punch it. <laughs> You'll have so you and Jane have a soul connection. Yeah, so the last bit that I that I really want to leave you guys with with conflict is that it is a normal part of communication. If you can get good at conflict, your role play will improve. Like literally. You will get better at writing conflict with your characters. You will get better at plotting and communicating with the people that you're writing with. You will get better at every part of role play if you can practice how to have conflict. Uh, yeah, because, and, and you will just be a better person in general, which I know sounds so silly because we're trained that conflict is bad, but like, if you are willing to work through conflict, then you can see other people's perspective and understand the world a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's never mm -hmm. a bad thing. Yep. All right. Okay. Article time. Article time! I have an okay. article of something escaping conflict. Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh, I already see the headline. I'm still closing the game, but I see the headline. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, okay, quit to desktop. There we go. Let's open this baby up. I'm watching this video now, and I'm just... <laughs> okay. The otter okay. one is really cute, too. I saw the otter one earlier. Penguin leaps into a tour boat to avoid being eaten by killer whales. And Whoa, what a strat. Like this is the ultimate, the ultimate avoidance of conflict. Okay. Tag yourself, the I'm the killer eaten. whale. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, tag yourself, I'm the penguin running away. No, I don't want it. <laughs> Yell at, so some, something I didn't, I didn't share too much during the, the talk because I, you know, I always want our, our guests to uh, be able to speak um, more and we just we just didn't have time. I already knew we were going to run over. But like, I'm the conflict avoidant one. I had to learn how to have conflict. It was a long road. <laughs> I'm definitely the orca, but that's because I feel like I was an orca in a past life at some point. Probably. <laughs> I mean, all they ever do is like play and eat things, and like they they're like so yeah. <laughs> orcas are so orcas are so funny. cute, but they're so aggressive, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> One of the species that kill for fun, like they yes! just they kill stuff that they don't eat. But also, Here's I just the... want to say, like, the, 
the penguin jumping into the boat is like a player jumping into the the admin's dms they're just like <gasps> please protect me <laughs> um can i just say that the um <laughs> this is a controversial top this is a controversial opinion the orca is the cat of the sea that is all i'm saying oh my god it's so true though <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, look at that penguin jump out of the water, though. You know it's got a good core. Holy crap. <laughs> penguin core. Down, there's a really cute one of an otter. Okay. Um, I think too. we've seen basically all the shots in this movie. I, I muted it so we weren't hearing it, but I wanted to, like, see it. Okay. Yeah. Let's do the same thing for the otter one. Hey, that's smart, though, because the orca is likely not going to take on a boat of people. Like, that's way too big for them. So, you know, good strat. <laughs> you would think. <laughs> <laughs> watch the otter one. <laughs> oh, do I need to like? Do I need to play it fast so we can get through this and get to like oh. a good part? Oh wait, it's not YouTube. I can't make it fast. Oh, thank you for the posture check, salty, and thank you for the hydrates. I know people people did send them, um, and I don't I don't like verbally acknowledge them during interstage window, but I do do them. So thank you guys. And oh my god, sixteen subs because of all of those gift subs. Y'all are too much. Y'all are too much. I put like as a joke. We beat that sub goal. We did. I mean, I put as a joke, like I got this All a right. tip from another from another Twitch person that was like, just have a goal of like one sub. People will do it just to hit that easy goal. And I was like, sure, whatever. I'm like 16. Craziness. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Otter did the same freaking thing. <laughs> Otter yeeted just, out. <laughs> whale just, is like, defeated. I can, feel the, I can feel the orca vibes. Like, I can, <laughs> like, I can, I can, the orca is just staring. Slipping, slipping through my claws. I'm like, that's... I can wait. The orange is <laughs> Why? I want it. Let me have it. <laughs> it's the orca's like, next time you can't stay out of the general chat forever. <laughs> That's right. You can't stay out of gen chat forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Let's wrap this up, y'all. Let's wrap this up. I'm scared yeah, of the, I'm, the, the videos are very cute. Um, <laughs> the orca is the. The the otter one goes on for a while, so I would 100% watch convince anyone to watch it. The orc the otter goes back in and then comes back out. It's really cute. So, and at the end, they do not die. So. Oh, good. I mean, I would hope that if they did, that they wouldn't have posted the video. You know what I, I mean? Would hope. <laughs> you never know. Yes, Jane, we are gonna do a raid, but before we do, before we um go find somebody to raid, uh, let's let's do our little outro. So, Sasha, where can everybody find you? Um, Sasha, your problematic fave. Please join me on my fantastic roleplay site, Barbermonger. You can Google it. It's spelled like it sounds. Roleplay site is B A R B E R M O N G E R dot M E. That's Barbermonger dot me. You can find the link to my Discord chat from there where I hang out and I will change your name to something stupid, like a food that I would eat if you were a food. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Karen it's is awesome. A, a pink lemonade was, cupcake. Right yeah, oh, pink lemonade I am. That uh, what's Marina? A lot of sense. What's Marina? Oh, Marina is um. Marina's she's a swordfish. she's a swordfish. She's so she's a swordfish steak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can see that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You got, you got really good. We all really we all have good. food sonas. It's wonderful right now. <laughs> yeah, you have your, someone is a mozzarella stick. Someone else is pop rocks. And now I need to go. Now I need to go chat in there just so I can figure out. So yeah. Sasha can figure out. You can out get a food sona. Yeah, be active yeah, you're, in the barber monger. You might be a kettle corn, Landon. I think you're oh. a kettle corn, like salty but sweet. So go post oh. in there, and I'll I'll change your name to kettle corn. God. I like that for Landon. That's a good one. <laughs> okay. So um, I all right. Have, I have. Hold on. Can I tell the story, or is it too? Yeah. No. No. You're good. We've already run over. It's whatever. <laughs> So uh, I was having a conversation with a girl that I liked. At, this was a couple years ago. And uh, we were doing this thing where it's like, what food are you? And um, she gave me pomegranate because I'm really difficult to get into. Uh, and then like when you get it open, you realize how much work you more you have to dig through it. And this is what the girl I like is telling me about <laughs> myself. She's telling um, you she likes <laughs> you and she's tired of digging and just open up already. <laughs> yeah and she's like and by the time you get to those seeds you have to wonder if it was all worth it and then you're like meh <laughs> like, okay oh my god you're like excuse me i'm gonna just never talk and, to you again and actually that's a great seg segue because i wrote a poem about being a pomegranate and it is in my book and you can buy that on amazon yeah that's that's this 
<laughs> That's this little guy right here. This book right here. So I'll pull it out so you guys can see. Um, so, okay, here we go. Around the world and back again. If you like poetry, go get this book. Also, if you don't like poetry, but you like traveling, get this book because a lot of these poems are about traveling. Um, yes. yeah. Also, you can see how I feel about being a pomegranate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that so much. That's hilarious. I had no idea. I had no oh, idea that that's lot. what that was inspired from. <laughs> um, and uh, then, yeah. So, Sasha, keep going. See, keep going with your uh, plugs. Yeah. More. Do you yeah, have more no, plugs? That's, that's it. No, okay. that's it. Come to, come to Barber Monger. Don't follow me on Instagram. Don't try and find me on Facebook. I wish to remain a, an unknown, mysterious clown. That's <laughs> That's my goal. Know me only through my work. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 all right so with that um landon where can they find you you can find me at land in maine l-a-n-d-i-n it's a pun it'll catch on and be funny eventually um <laughs> i crack myself up every week with it so <laughs> i think it's going. amusing <laughs> <laughs> um and you can find me there on instagram and tiktok that's what we're promoting this week um hey and if you want to, uh, my burlesque is I'm a Slytherin, and uh, there's some saucy photos on there. So check me out there. Other than that, they're all, uh, like, appropriate. But, yeah. Um, burlesque. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, uh, there's my thing in the chat. That's what all I got right. for you guys. <laughs> all right so i'm, I'm gonna make it quick y'all already know all my y'all already know all my jazz and i got 16 subs today so like i don't care there's all my socials if you care um there's the discord <laughs> if you care that's it that's our show guys i'll see y'all next week none of um none of my friends in the wolves den are are live at the moment so we're gonna raid into my favorite sims 2 streamer although she doesn't need it she has 600 freaking, freaking people watching her right now but um but that's what we're gonna raid into because i love i love me some sims 2 so that's what we're gonna do <laughs> Unless anybody wants to lead the raid, I do have that channel point. If y'all want that, you're welcome to click it. If you can get to it before the time that I type this command, then uh, we can raid who you want to raid. Pleasant Sims. Yes, Pleasant Sims. I love her. Pleasant Sims. Uh, okay, there we go. We're raiding into Pleasant Sims. All right, you guys, uh, don't forget to, uh, to make it a great day. And don't forget to be awesome. All right. All Bye, right. everybody. See you later. Bye.